Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we're getting it all in Elijah, a fantastic adventure game developed by Skeleton Crew Studio, published by Devolver Digital and is usually available for £12.49 but it's free right now on the old Game Pass. So I know I'm late to this one but uh, better late than never eh? Yes. So we play as Faraday. A man who ends up at this weird island and gets dragged into finding Lady Elijah, who's gone missing, etc, etc. Uh, the story is actually very, very good with quite a good few twists and turns. Uh, now as for achievements, there are only 10, which is nice. Two easy miscellaneous ones, a combat related one, crafting a cap, opening 10 treasure chests, rescuing 10 castaways, uh, finding 8 music boxes and a story related one at the end. So achievements are nice, but bear in mind we've got a few bosses to go up against in this game as well, although for the most part they have like only two or three moves, which you can easily dodge and smash them when you know what they're doing, the dodgy dong bags. So all in all then, you're going to be looking at around three to four hours to get this done, obviously depending uh, with your luck and skill on the bosses. Uh, well, with that being said then, let us begin. So of course we are going to start a new game as always. Uh, the now, obviously, we're going to be going into a nice prologue first. A um, few things to notice uh, in terms of controls. You press the A button to jump. Later on, we are going to grab the harpoon, which we will use for, to move around and for killing stuff. Um, a little bit later on, we can press and hold the A button here to skip the game. Uh, but we'll be using the harpoon with the B button. And obviously, left stick to move, etc, etc. You're going to press the X button to melee. The Y button to use your secondary weapon, which will be basically your primarily weapon throughout the entire game. Uh, so, <laughs> um, again, when we come to it, I'll let you know. But for now, we're just going to be pressing the X button to melee. And then when we get the sword and everything later, we'll be spamming the Y button with everything to kill. So, there we go. Right, so first things first then. There we go, X button to smash. There you go. Oh, Faraday smash. Arr, arr, arr. No, no, nobody ever smacked and said, arr, arr, arr. Right, so, when you see the um, magnifying glass button, you can press the up button on the D-pad to uh, interact with it, and you might find some coins or some money. There's not a lot of those options throughout the game, though, so don't worry about that. So, we obviously, the prologue first, we're just going to keep smashing through. We end up on this weird little island. So, you just press up to climb things, down to... Down climb things, I suppose. Um, the, these little <laughs> these little balls of nothingness. You don't have to worry about them. We'll go straight in the cave here. And that's exactly what you do, isn't it? You Instead of just calling and waiting for help and then going home, no, we'll go exploring into weird, dodgy-looking, alien-like caves. Okay. Right, so just keep going forward then. Now, these little green boxes, which kind of look like pears or something on them, they are sort of health, they are little health sort of pickups, if you wish, so always be on the lookout for them. Um, so we've got these little balls of, I don't know, they just, it just looks like diarrhea or something, it just generally looks like a big dump. Uh, so, so, just, you can go ahead and kill the dump balls if you wish, and don't really do anything apart from trying to kill you. These are, <laughs> if you fall on or fall on an enemy from a, from a bit of a height, you'll squash them dead as well, which comes in handy. Um, now, again, grab this pair if you want, if you've um, just got a, uh, need, need a little bit of health. <laughs> Weird little worm things trying to kill you. Now, you can actually just walk through them, though, so I'm pretty sure that is literally fine. Yeah, so they're just angry at you, but they can't do anything because they are literally just worms in the ground. So you're going to get this little cuts in here with a little bit of a skeleton. Now these scenes you can't skip, you can't skip any dialogue, so just enjoy the creepy ass voice. But as soon as the scene is over, you need to start moving to the left immediately. So now start moving to the left and we're going to run all the way back. So you can't go very fast. Um, I would get up onto the... No, don't bother getting up onto the platform. I don't know why I bothered doing that. Because we need to jump on this jumping platform. Now we can jump on the platforms. So I just made life difficult there. Stay up on the platforms here. Jump across to the other side. Jump across. And then you will automatically smash your way out like a 
big badass looking broski brosk. Now, this is the delightful little guy who will help us in our journey. Uh, helps us get to the... Well, the place is called Oak Tide, which is basically our little home hub section, if you uh, want to call it that. Uh, where there's no enemies and nothing's trying to kill you. And there's no evil on this part of the island, luckily. Um, but we will use old Grand Boatmaster Funk Diddy to move around a lot. So, so there's that. Um, right, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump off the boat. We're going to run all the way to the right. We're going to continue going to the right, ignoring everyone for now, just until we get to the house at the end. And it's got a map piece on the table. Which will be your first one out of four. So this is our little hut area, if you will. So again, press up on the D-pad, or press up on the left stick to grab that. And what we're going to do then is run all the way, all the way back to the left to interact, uh, interact with Funk Diddy, Grandmaster Boatman, to get a world map to appear. So, press up on the D-pad there when you get to Funk Diddy Boatmaster. And this is basically, like I said, this is the world map then. So, we need to uncover, we need to find three more map pieces to get more pieces of the map, of course. Um, Oak Tide will be our home hub base if you want to. Um, but for now, we've only got two other places to go to. So, what we're going to do is go to Shadow Creek, which was on the left there. And we're actually going to be getting our first achievement of the game. Now, we don't have a hat. So you can just, so if you go to the left there, you basically just go back to Oak Tide. The hats are in the middle, which we need to craft. And then on the right is where we can choose to embark, disembark, embark. Anyway, every time you go to a new place, you will get a short little scene where the Funk Diddy Grand Boatmaster is going to start talking about Steph. <laughs> So this is where we're going to get the first achievement then. All we got to do is press up here on the big, um, uh, what's this, the horn. I was going to call it a flute then. No, but press up on the D-pad or left stick here on the horn three times. The <laughs> Grandmaster Funk Diddy Boatman is going to get angry, but we don't care. He's going to throw some rocks at us. Ah, you son of a, you took off some of our health as well, you little. I'm going to rip your beard off and then shove it up your butt later on and tell you. Get anyway, we've got the Oni Hasoto achievement. Now we can make our way left. Uh, maybe I won't shove his uh, beard up his butt, but still, I'll rip it off at least. Right. So what we're going to do then? We're going to uh, just keep going left for now. Uh, you can melee some boxes and uh, collect some loot off dead bodies if you want to, but we're going to come up to a door eventually. So if we keep going left, we're going to come up to a door in just a bit. There it is. That requires a key. So, obviously, it's going to say that we don't have a key, because, of course, we don't have a key, and we need to find the key. Right, there we go. 
So what we're going to do then, we are going to go to the right here, jump up on the platform, and then climb up the ladder. And you can see, like, a little, little switch, which is exactly what we need. So we need to go right here into the next room, use the launch pad to jump up onto the next platform, go left, jump across, and interact with the switch, of course. Again, I always highly recommend looting boxes and everything, smashing boxes, uh, just to get as much money as we possibly can. So we've got four. So four money so far, that's good. Right, so we're going to drop down and we're going to go through this gate here, which is called the Dark Door. Now, these Dark Doors are basically dungeons, but you only have one-time access to them. So as soon as you exit, they close for good. Um, so there will be a couple of things sometimes that we need to collect before heading out. But of course, I'll let you know when that is. So we've got a few things to collect here anyway. So go through the switch and go through the gate. Smash open these couple of boxes. And then we can get them automatically smash straight down. Get rid of these little dumpling balls right here. They're all good. And happy days. Right, so from here, when we smash these boxes, we are going to head to the left. Jumping up on the platforms, going to the left, and we can see somebody just chilling, hanging by a cage. So what we need to do is jump up on the platforms again. And, well, we need to climb up. What we are going to do is smash him down. And when we go to the left, we can press the X button here to get rid of these, um, you know, these wart-stained walls or whatever. Automatically pick up the rapier. And this is what I mean. Now we're going to be pressing the Y button pretty much constantly throughout the rest of the game. So again, you can use the X button to still melee if you want, but using the Y button is the preferred and easier option. So press the Y button. When you jump on the cage to smash him down, the hat master is going to be like, eh. instead of saying thanks, he's going to start talking about, you know, all kinds of stuff. Right, back to the home for you, Grandpa. But where your hands can work again. What the hell do you mean by that? What the hell do you mean by that? Well, let's just hope that when I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping on my own. Hmm? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, flip the switch. When he stops talking about his hands working again. Oh, I don't know what he means by that. Hmm. Right, and now we've got these enemies that are appearing. So again, uh, they're non-trivial. They're not too bad. So you just need to press the white button on them just a couple of times. And you'll end up doing like this kick-ass move now. To kill them, you're going to see. Ah. Oh. No, we're not quite doing it yet, but it basically we do the, like this choppy chop chop um, move to kill them off if you want. So, of course, every time you kill an enemy, if they drop something, make sure to collect it as well, whether that's money or a bit of health, etc. So, we're going to proceed to the right couple of um, enemies once more. Just keep on smashing. <clears throat> Again, pressing the Y button there to use your rapier sword. Right. Now that we've done that then, now we can carry on to the right. A couple more enemies right here. And again, just smash, smash, smash. Oh, there's that choppy, chop, chop sword move. That's pretty cute. Right, what we're going to do, drop down <laughs> automatically again. Kill another couple of enemies here. And then from here, we are going to proceed to the lefto. As soon as one more drops down. How do you know where we are? Dude hasn't got any eyes. Smelly little ting. So they're kind of like big dumpling babies, if you want to call them that. Right, so, uh, smash through all these to get a bit of money. Now, again, when we jump up here, we're going to kill Broski Broski. Now, what you're going to see, as we proceed to the left, you're going to see what looks like a mouth on the, on the left-hand side wall, as soon as we stop killing these dudes. These are actually just portals, so don't panic yourselves about that. You don't get eaten, and that's the end of the game. We end up in this new room. Now, when we kill another couple of enemies here, you can see the first treasure chest and a ship in a bottle. And the ship in a bottle I'm not actually going to go for. There's no need to grab them, to be honest. Um, but the treasure chest, remember, we need at least 10 of these. Now, there are more than 10 in the game, which is fine. But I will direct you and grab you whenever we see one. Well, I, w I won't personally grab you. That'll be incredible. And that will pretty much end up with me as a prison sentence. But still, <coughs> we're going to grab the first treasure chest and then start heading to the right. Right. More enemies to smash and dash. And then we're just going to go to the right for a couple of screams. Uh, screams? <laughs> screams? So again, just keep going right for the time being. Now, if you've seen me stop for a couple of seconds, I'm quickly checking my notes because I was trying to 
obviously find the, the best and easiest way to go and the quickest paths of course so we're going to go up the ladder we're going to continue again and we're going to jump we go smash the boxes of course just in case it's always it's always worth checking because we need you know um quite a few resources and stuff to craft the caps <gasps> craft the caps as well sorry it's half five in the morning here so my voice is still <laughs> you know whatever that means right so we're going to go up and we've got a couple of launch pads to continue moving up but what we're going to do is smash open these boxes first and then we can use the launch pads to go up 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 and away Ooh, treasury stuffs right so there is a second treasure chest here so smash these boxes grab these bits of um health pickups and stuff and then what we can do is, th there was some treasure there on the left-hand side, which is why I walked there. This is where the second treasure chest out of 10 is then, so make sure to collect that. Jump across the gap. And, ta-da! That's it, we've got some nice monos for our troubles, which always comes in handy. Right, so now we can drop down, now we can start going to the left, climb up, and we can see our first yellow key. And we should now be done with this area, so now we can just head through the portal, and that will be... Um... That'll be this dark door done. So remember, we cannot come back here. But again, there is there is nothing that is uh, should be truly missable. So we should have had two treasure chests, the yellow key. We've rescued the hat maker. We've got our first collecting weapon. So now is oh good, oh good, baby. Right. So after that, that's uh, that's a goodbye from me, baby. So we're gonna go down. And we're going to the door from the left here, which now we can open with the D-pad there. Lovely, and it doesn't open like a normal door. No, it just has to flex its balls, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, I can break at the flick of a key or something. So now we can go through with this cave into this little open cave area. And what we're going to do is go left, but we're going to stay up on the platforms. So make sure to stay up. Ignore the enemy there at the bottom. But we are going to jump up once again onto the platform. We're going to cut this rope. We are going to cut this rope with the Y button. And it's also left bumper to cycle through the uh, specific weapons as well. Um, but again, we don't need to worry about that until later on. So we're going to cut this one, but we're not going to cut this rope. So just keep moving to the left. Um, you can... That, that's fine, because we need to grab these bit of boxes anyway. This weird monkey thing decides to pop out. is absolutely nowhere. Uh, but that's fine because we needed to go down anyway, so we can. <laughs> so we need to climb down the ladder and climb up the left ladder because there's no other way to get across. And then we're going to go to the left. Watch out for the brambles, I was going to say, because that equals 30 hertz. But we can go outside now. So just head out. And what you're going to see is this little health fountain. Now, there are plenty of these scattered throughout the game, and they come in mega handy, especially later on. Uh, so all you do is press up on the D-pad, and you pretty much get an... You can keep going until you're fully recovered with health, which is nice. Right, so we're going to go all the way to the left here. Here are our first enemies. These are flying enemies, even though they just, they're just humans with wings. Now, it's worth noting, as we can see, we've got a little bit of a dead body to have a look at there. It's worth noting that every time you go, uh, go left or right a couple of screens, these enemies do return. So... Later on, if you're needing some money or just some uh, some things to collect for your craft in the caps, um, it's always worth just coming back to this particular area anyway and just smashing out uh, and grinding out some um, monies. Right, watch out here. There is an enemy with a bow as we climbed up the ladder. So I just like to get to the bow enemies pretty quickly. So that's what we do, plus killing the other dudes on the way anyway. And we're going to press the white button here to smash open the left, smash open the way. Kill another couple of enemies right here. And of course, when the enemies are dead, make sure that you've got all the boxes as well, so you can get all the loop, the loop, the loot out of them. Now what we're going to do is flick this switch right here. After collecting, like I said, collecting everything again. And then we can drop down. That'll open the gate for us on the left. Smash open these next couple of enemies. Square in the old Nug Nugs. And then when we go to the right, you can see the third treasure chest. So we're going to be getting that one. So what we need to do now is... You can get, again, like I said, it's always worth just killing these enemies. I always end up doing that anyway. 
just to grab some loot. And like I said, they might drop some things for us to collect, which comes in handy for the caps we're going to create. Now, later on, I'll let you know, but there are only two caps that we're going to actually bother um, making. Uh, one's for an achievement, and one, make thing, one makes life a hell of a lot easier. So anyway, when we're done with this area, go back to the left, and we're going to go all the way left this time, and we're going to enter yet another cave. <clears throat> and then from here, what we're going to do is just head left, and then we're going to run into a random flute player who's just chilling, playing his flutomophone, uh, as we get a short scene with him. So just keep going left for a sec. There he is. Oh, see my heart. Thank you for your words of wisdom, oh flutomophone player. Hmm, appreciate it. Right, what we're going to see now is a temple door right here, but what we're going to do is continue going to the left. And then we see this waterfall area. Don't jump straight in because you don't drown, but you do lose a chunk of health. There are a couple of platforms just behind the waterfall, as you can see. And this is where our first music box is. So, and you'll notice that if you uh, fall into spikes and stuff like that, you don't die immediately as we go right now into the temple. Um, but you do lose quite a considerable chunk, about a quarter of your health bar. So just be careful when d diving muff first into everything, uh, head first into everything. Right. Keep going to the right here, just keep going, and we're going to see a couple of things for us to break open, uh, just for a little bit of monos, which is always nice. And now we're going to head in here, it's not technically a dark door, but we were not going to access it, we're not going to be able to access it once we've completed this. So heading through, going to the right, now when you see these little faint lines, they are arrows, so as soon as you see the faint lines... Uh, arrows will appear from absolutely nowhere, so just make sure to try and avoid them best you can. So again, just jump, and then when you see another one, it's going to jump again, or we're going to jump again even. And there we go. So, now, hit these, every time you see a skeleton, I always highly advise um, smashing it. Jump off the elevator here. Now, what you can do is get the Icarus achievement. So if you give it about 30 seconds, you should be able to jump down to your death, unlocking the Icarus achievement. Uh, just wait about 30 seconds, maybe to a minute, or until the elevator stops. Now, I didn't... I, ac I actually <laughs> didn't die here, so that's fine. If you don't get the Icarus achievement here for dying, then that's fine. Um, you'll just start again at the beginning of the room, so you can just go to the right and uh, make your way back down. Um, so just watch this. There's arrows that come from absolutely everywhere, and they will go through the platforms. So just be very, very careful right here. Um, but yes, sorry, I was, like I said, I was going on about the Icarus achievement there. So again, if you don't get it yet, we'll get it a lot later as well. Here is the next treasure chest. This will be the treasure chest 4 out of 10 already. Um, and again, if you've got, you know, if you manage to miss, as we go to the left, we're going to start heading to the left. Um, there will be a health fountain coming up shortly anyway, so that's all good. Um, <laughs> nothing to crap yourself with just here. But as we go into the left room, it's quite a large room, but there's not a lot that usually needs to be done. So we can jump up, we can smash um, this these ropes down, or cut these ropes down, that'll give us the way of life. The way of life is through your wife. Uh, mm, really? Well, wow, that's great advice. Right, so now we're just going to go through this temple door here. And now we're going to proceed to the right. We're going to start automatically walking slower here. Um, until we continue. It's basically just part of the story. So, take in the sights. Don't crap your pants. Don't run away. Y'all good. Just keep walking right. So now we've got the harpoon, this will be your basically primary weapon for moving around for the rest of the game. We will be using this for the rest of the game. So you need to summon the harpoon with the B button. So what you can do is throw it, 
and press it to summon. So press the B button, so throw it. And what you need to do, you see this little line, you need to press whichever direction you're going in. When it lights up, then you can press the uh, B button again. And then it pulls itself across the water. So it'll take a few times. So press the B button once, press right on the D-pad, and then press the B button. It's so right and B on the, the D-pad. And it'll be the same. So look up. And when it's lit up, that means you can move up. Same, so uh, press the B button to throw it, then the right on the D-pad to get yourself across, and then use it with the left-hand side one as well. So move left here, but uh, don't summon the harpoon yet. Go through the door, then press the B button to grab it back. Yep, <laughs> that'll do it. And then we've gotten through the doors. So we're going to jump down here anyway, that's all good. And then go to the left. So again, the creepy genital wars, don't worry about them. Um, there is a ship in a bottle here, which again, we don't actually need. But I'm just showing you where this one is anyway. So you throw your um, harpoon at it there to uh, collect that one. So that's Owly Good. And then what we're going to do is just head, start heading to the right. Now, of course, we're going to start getting used to it. So what you need to do, you see the multiple eyes at the very top of the screen. That's what you're aiming for. So head up and then press up and B. And there we go. We start making our way up. Go to the right now when we're off the launch pad for another quite delectable scene. And that's it. End of the game. Jitlon style, 5000G style. Yes. No. So this basically signifies then the end of the prologue. Now we can start setting out on our primary journey. So obviously if you followed along with this guide, you will have zero blue keys, zero yellow keys, no castaways, but one music box. So again, don't worry about the... Um, and of course you should have four treasure chests as well, but it won't tell you. I will tell you what I mean now. So these are the things that we can end up crafting. Uh, we need to grab. So we need to grab golden necklaces, feathers, claws, etc. Um, in order to craft these caps later on. So there you go, that's what you should have, zero, 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 and one, plus four treasure chests, of course. And when you're done with that, we can now start to begin the primary journey of getting our first blue key out of three. So we're going to have a chill, relax or rancho after the quite crap pantingly time. So we are waking up in our hut. Now what we're going to do is start doing a couple of health upgrades. Now you want to get these health upgrades pretty much out of the way as quickly as you can. Uh, so we're going to head to the left here. Left onto the next screen. And this is where the alchemist is then. So climb up the ladder and we need to spend, you should have around 30. Now I've only got 129 because of edits and stuff. I kept going back and forward to screens and killing different enemies. So... You may have a little bit less than I have, but that's fine, because there's plenty of the game. Uh, there's lots of the game left where we can upgrade the health anyway, so it's not one of those that you wait until the very, very end, or you're close to the end. But hopefully you should have enough to unlock him and upgrade your health at least once. Um, again, if you've only got enough to just unlock him, that's fine. We, we, we'll be coming back to Oak Tide at every opportunity, and you'll get the health upgrades anyway. So, this screen is where we can find the soup, the magic soup that restores all your health. Good god, I wish it was that easy. So that's it, when you're ill, you just get a, a bit of soup and then you're better and you can go and, you know, kill a couple of dumpling balls and some f weird flying enemies for some reason. Um, now, this guy, you can waste your money if you want, but I wouldn't bother. He's basically an explorer that just goes out, 
and then he comes back with a couple of stuff, but he comes back with pretty much crappy stuff, so I wouldn't bother. This is where the hat shop is, so the hat maker, remember the guy we rescued who said, ooh, I can't wait till my hands are busy with you, boy. Uh, uh, excuse me? Now, if we move forward <laughs> enough of the screen, he's going to start talking for a second. Uh, <laughs> that's what I hope that's what he meant by he's going to keep his hands busy. So, these are the hats that you can craft. Now, there's only two that we are going to end up going for, and they are both on the bottom. Um... And I'll show you which ones they are. So we're just having a little look around. So, so you can see obviously the items that you need to craft them with. So this is the one we need. No fear, low, no fear. The two bottom middle ones, by the way. That's what we're going to try and go for later on. So for now, head to the right here. And there's a treasure chest on the bottom right. So that's treasure chest 5 out of 10. Now what we're going to do is harpoon dash up. So you can just see the multitude of eyes there. There it is. So uh, multi harpoon dash your way up. And you can see a music box, the second out of eight music boxes to grab. Uh, and that's it for this particular little area. You can grab, there's another two uh, loot boxes up there, which I don't end up grabbing. So, like I said, there are only two that we need for the achievements, the two middle ones. The one that says, steal vitality from your enemies, and no longer fear the bit of acid, also secretes against its own foes. So that that is what we need in order to grab these. So, every time we kill an enemy, we're going to loot him, make sure to grab everything off his enemies and the, the the bones that we need are off these sort of dead skeletons that are lying about in each level so every time you come up to a skeleton i highly advise smashing them the feathers we can find in treasure boxes and again loot in boxes and things like that and the necklaces you can normally find off enemies and scattered around the world we'll normally find plenty of items in order to grab those two later on but for now of course we ain't got nothing mate nothing so we're going to go to Grandmaster Funk, Diddy Boatman, and this time we're going to head to the Shadow Gate. <laughs> See, I can be a damn good, um, I can be a damn good villain if I wanted to. But since I'm not and I'm just a lowly guide maker, we're going to continue on with the game. So let's go to the Shadow Gate. Yeah, this place doesn't look so shadowy to me. Right, so we're going to proceed to the right, and there's going to be two doors here. We're going to go through the first big door. Remember to keep bashing all the skeletons you can to grab all the bones. Sometimes bones will appear, other times not. So we're going to run all the way to the right until we see a, a door with basically three blue keyholes. Now, this is necessary at the very, very end of the game. So, obviously, we've got quite a bit to do quite first. Nope, I don't think Faraday's gonna uh, find his way home. He's gonna have to stay a day. Ah! Hilarious. Right, so now we can go to the left. So keep heading to the left. We know we're, that it's basically for the final boss fight, by the way, later on. So now we can head out of the temple. I just wanted to show you those three blue key doors um, just so for later on. That's all, so you know where it is. Uh, but we're gonna hop and dash our way up and go through the dark door here. Now, what we need to do in here is grab. Uh, collect one treasure chest, a new weapon, the blue key, and the second map piece. Now, the first blue key indicates that it will be a boss fight. So, strap yourselves on, uh, in, 
I mean up, but whatever. Strap yourselves up anyway, and let's go. So head into the right, smash this box first. And we're going to get rid of these big molten genital pieces. Gelatin pieces, I meant. And after this scene, we're going to end up with a couple of zombies in a room. Randomly. Random zombies, for some reason. What the hell is this place? So, the enemies... I don't know. I don't think they can hear. I think they're just chilling for the most part and they're just following you around. Um, but I decide to end their life because nobody wants to live their life as a bloody zombie, do they? Surely not. Uh, maybe. Well, it depends on the zombie, doesn't it? Uh, but anyway, after you... <laughs> unfortunately smash all these dudes up, what you're going to do now is go into the right into the next room. There's going to be a little section of wall full of dead bodies, which we can climb up, which is always nice. <laughs> Slicey dicey. So uh, start heading your way up. And then what we're going to do is walk to the left. And we're going to auto-summon our harpoon, which is always nice as well. So that's nice. Noisy slicey. Smashes a couple of enemies there. Job done. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to go left. We're going to go... Um... <laughs> Again, to the left. So, I mean, if we really want to, we can start heading to the left right now. Ah, there we go. Right. Now, what we can do is jump up, smash these boxes out of the way. <laughs> and then we can continue right. So, harpoon dash your way across. And then we can go in. So, there is a crawl space then that we cannot get through yet. But there is an ice dock on the other side, as you'll see in just a moment. When we drop down here. So you can't actually walk through here at the bottom, but we need we can dash ourselves across. So smash open these boxes, get some money, and then harpoon dash. So again, remember, it's press the B button and then right and B. Right and B, and there we go. So once we jump up here, we're going to continue right until we reach a door that we can enter. So just keep going to the right for now. There will be a couple of enemies that will appear. So just be on your tippy tats, you know. Ah, bow woman. Angry bow lady. Eh. So, after killing all the angry ladies and the angry enemies, now we can just head right through into this door. Uh, <laughs> Yep, let's go through this door then. Yes, there we go. Sorry, always just checking my notes. It's one of those. So, you can see a treasure chest, but we can't actually get there yet. So, we're going to head to the left. Kill this enemy right here, of course. And smash open these few boxes. You will fall down, so nay panicky about that one. Now, after grabbing everything here, again, always make sure to be on the lookout for some health pickups, etc, etc. But what we're going to do, we are going to go to the right. We're going to use the launch pad at the top. Uh, we're actually going to go to the right first. So, uh, so uh, ignore the launch pad here. I do have a little jump a couple of times because, uh, you know, it's always fun to be on a trampoline. You're in a world where everything wants to kill you, so you might as well have a bit of fun somewhere. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to go to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Another enemy, to, another couple of dumpling enemies and another flying broski to kill. With absolute easy squeezy lemon cheese here. Keep going to the right and you can see a launch pad right here. Uh, there is a little bit of health and a bomb on the right hand side. But we're just going to go straight up on the ladder. Flick the switch. And that opens the gate above us which is always nice. Oh, are you are ready you boys? Well, who wants some death? Me, me. No, not me personally, so we're just going to head all the way back to the left. Now we can go into the room with the two launch pads, so you need to launch pad off one and then harpoon dash yourself across. Hiya! There we go, with ease, and now we can launch up. And now we can just kill the two enemies, which I just foolishly... Oh, look at that, I jumped back up lovely, and then I fell back down. God damn it. If this does happen, what you can do is just harpoon dash down... And then it'll, you'll automatically harpoon yourself back up. So now we can just go onto the treasure chest level, open up the treasure chest, and that should be 6 out of 10 already. So, job done. Right, now we can proceed to the right through the old opening door. 
So head into the right. Two broski broskies wanna... Hey, bitch, you wanna dance? Aw, oh, yeah. So proceed right, and we're gonna get a couple more enemies here. So slicey dicey, and then the gate will open after you kill old enemy bags right here. So again, if there are any boxes, make sure to be grabbing them as we can uh, proceed to the right. And now what we're going to do is just drop down. So from here, we can just drop down. Oh, look at that. Epic dumpling squash right there. Right, kill zombie or not if you want to. Uh, but we're going to go to the left first for a scene. And we're going to interact with a live slash dead thing to get a yellow key. <laughs> Hey, you got some nice boots, buddy. Mind if I take them or, uh, I, I mean, you're not going to need them now, are you, bud? Nope. Right, so anyway, what we can do now is head up, basically to the area that we came, and watch out for the wires here, or the arrows. So the trip wires, as soon as it goes, whoa, make a jump for it. There we go, good stuff. Right. There is going to be a hell found in here in just a bit, but now we can open up the door that we obviously couldn't get without the key a little earlier on. Um, so now we're going to go through to the right, and there is a health fountain right here if you need it. So again, these come thick and fast. Like we, um, I only need the tiniest smidgen of stuff, which is all good. We're going to keep going to the right for now. And then what we're going to do eventually, we are going to have to harpoon dash ourselves up. So again, anytime you see a skeleton, make sure to grab this so you can grab a bone. Harpoon dash up. Again, bone for um, crafting the caps, which we need later on. And then what we're going to do, we're going to continue right here. There's going to be some zombies. Now, the game actually calls these broskies the lost ones. So they're not zombies then. They're just lost souls who just don't want to die, except we are being complete douchebaggeries and killing those who are lost. I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm already going to hell, so you might as well take some lost ones with you. Right, so you can make a little platform on certain sections of these walls. So you, you put your harpoon in, you... Um, Get the platform going, you can jump up on the platform to get to higher levels. Job done. Right. Now, what we're going to do is actually be coming up to our next weapon. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep going. We're just going to keep basically go through this door and then keep heading to the right for the time being. So we're in like a library little section now. So climb up, go to the right. And you're going to see another scene for us to see. Meh. Now that is actually the first boss that we're going to be fighting. Uh, so we'll just um, come up to him. We'll, we'll give a crap about him in just a bit. But for now, we're going to get this weapon, which is called the Rotten Wood Repeater. It's a different Y attack weapon that basically fires darts. So if you want to switch weapons, you can just press the left bumper. Now, personally, I just used the rapier sword for the majority of the game. Didn't really use the guns. There are two guns, a dark gun and a shotgun. Didn't more, I didn't end up using them uh, in all fairness. So to the right here, we've got another piece of the map. That'll be the second out of four. Now we can exit using the door on the right hand side and then continuing to the right. So go through the cave. Go through the cave. Uh, go to the right. You, you can pick up the darts as well. Um, there's a box to the left. A couple of enemies here for us to kill and grab. Now there is a, another one that starts shooting darts and stuff at you. So. My advice is kill these broskies first, the ones that try to shoot you, because they are a pain in the old bunder bags. Yeah, 
One cool thing I forgot to say, you can actually use your harpoon as a weapon. So you can actually um, stick it into an enemy if you wanted to, and then harpoon that your way into the enemy to kill them dead, which comes in very, very handy for some fights later on. So into the next room here, as you can see, look at that, just harpoon dashed away straight up the old woman. Take that how you want. Um, and then killed her dead. Oh. I tell you what, in, in, another co in another conversation, that context may be... <laughs> that, that would have been gotten way out of hand. So grab the box here, and then we have finally... Oh, son of a goddamn you, you monkey uncle. Well, I guess we got some more enemies to kill. So this old dude disappears sometimes. So just keep harpoon... If you can, just keep harpoon dashing your way over to the guy. So every time he goes to the left, stick your harpoon dash into him because he throws electrical charges at you and everything. So if you harpoon dash your way into him, you can hurt him. Plus, you uh, can get there obviously a lot quicker. But obviously, you always look out for his electrical charge and try to kill him first. So, finally then, after this little enjoyable battle was done, make sure to grab the feather. Like I say, any time a body drops any loot or anything, you're going to be grabbing that. So that's why I've just gone from left to right here, double-checking each screen to make sure we haven't missed anything. Of course, we need feathers for the caps that we're going to create later on. So, there we go. NG Electrical Balls. That's a, that's a new one. But for now, we're heading to the right. Another little old lady. So you need to harpoon dash yourself straight into her. Or you can just go and kill her dead. And again, try not to hit these skull, these skull bombs, which, you know, th it does come in handy when you, you know, don't die and stuff. Or don't lose almost half of your health bar. Um, for some reason, I'm really struggling to grab this one item, which I could have easily jumped over by the looks of things. So that's embarrassing. Uh, but everything you've grabbed in this room, a couple of dumpling balls right here. And kill this enemy. Again, hit the three boxes on the left if you so wish as well. See if there's any more money in there. Again, always worth doing. So now we are coming up to our first boss fight then. So once we go into this room, there's going to be a health fountain here. If you end up dying, you will just start again here at the health fountain. Right, so your harpoon is basically going to be useless for this fight, which is fine. But like I said, he's got a couple of moves that we he is going to use. Remember, you've got all of the left and all of the right to use. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, just go either to the left or right to give yourself some breathing room. Uh, but what he's going to do is throw enemies down at you, which you need to just kill first. He's also going to smash his way down. So he's going to go above you and try and smash his way down. Also gets rid of these um, arrows attacks. So as soon as he moves, that, that is your opportunity to hit him. So keep pressing the Y button to smash him. When he starts doing those knives attack, if, if he's doing it on the right, you need to start heading to the to the right. If he's going to the left, you just need to start heading to the left, etc. But every time he starts um, hovering down and trying to smash, uh, trying to smash you from above, and he gets stuck, that is your opportunity to hit him. Um, and like I said, he's going to start throwing bombs. He's going to start throwing arrows at you and knives and stuff like that. And remember, there are little pair health pickups as well. So if you need it, uh, make sure to grab those. Uh, but these are the only moves that he does. So again, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, just uh, head to the left, give yourself a little bit of breathing room before going back into the fight. But those are the only moves he's got anyway, so for now, just keep doing exactly this, and you should have no problems. So like I said, when he starts dropping bombs, <laughs> um, obviously do not go into the bombs because they can explode you dead. You can, when they first drop down, you can actually kick them away. Um, but don't walk into them like I done there and lose a considerable chunk of your health bar. Okay, that's just some good advice. Good friendly advice. If somebody's dropping bombs, 
Don't touch it. Don't walk into it. Don't look at it. Finally, god damn it. Now, uh, the next couple of bosses generally are actually easier, and that's because we can go on the offensive with a harpoon, whereas this one we have to do a little bit of dodging and quite a bit of avoiding, because the harpoon wouldn't work. Um, and we have to wait for him. The next couple are easier because we can just go straight on the offensive, stick your harpoon in, and as soon as you dash over, you can just keep spamming the Y button. Uh, but again, we will come to that a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, we've got our first blue key. We're going to head right for a scene, and that's it. So now we've got the first blue key, we've got a new weapon, and we've got more areas that we can travel to. Job done. So if you are following the guide, which hopefully you have been doing lovingly, you should be on, this is what you should be on now. You should be on one blue key, zero yellow key, zero castaways, and two music boxes. That is what you should be on. But we're going to end up basically back in our home hub in Oak Tide. So after the quite again, pant crappingly good time that we just had killing the first boss, we've got uh, Lady Elijah, there she is on the boat. I didn't even realise we were going to grab her that early, to be honest, so, well... Well done, job's done. Go home, take a nap. Nothing else to do now. Right, so as we start, there is going to be, on the next screen, only one screen over, the boat is going to appear, and it's going to appear here for another scene. Uh, so, I accidentally went too far, but you just need to go back to the left, they're going to appear here, and then just automatically walk into them for an automatically scene. We've come to serve our master again. Well, well, thank you. I mean, I don't, um, I'm not feeling that amorous right now, but hey, I'll take that. Oh, oh, sorry, you mean because I rescued Lady Lara, right, never mind, never mind, talking about different things. But I'm sure Lady Elisha said she wanted to uh, serve me. Oh, well, actually, I'll serve her. She is a lady after all. She is, you know, what is basically a princess. So 
Anything for you, princess. Just saved your ass. But you go on a boat. You go on your little adventures. That's fan. Right, so what we're going to do then is we're going to do a couple of things here in Oak Tide. We're going to go all the way to the right. So if we've got enough money here, we're going to go up to the health health guru broski right here. And it should be 110 now to go up to the next section and then 120. So I've just about got enough there in order to upgrade my health another couple of times. Um, again, like I said, if you've only got enough to upgrade once, that's honestly fine because we'll be coming back here every time. You will get this very quickly anyway as well. Uh, so grab a couple of soups, make sure your health is all full, upgraded, and bountiful. And then what we can do, again, if you want, you can have a look at the hat section now. The hat section of life. Um, have a look, see if you've got enough um, items here to upgrade either the vitality cap or the acid cap. Again, we've just about not got enough bones, so we're not going to bother with that uh, for now. So what we are going to do, though, is actually go back to Grandmaster Funk Diddy Boatmaster Man. And we're going to go back to Shadow Creek. Now, the reason we're going back is because we uh, couldn't grab a music box that we will get this time. Just to sort of get it out of the way, and then it's done, and it's done. Now, like I said, in this area, there's a lot of skeletons to... Uh, Destroy and grab the bones off them. So every time you see a skeleton, make sure to destroy them. And again, if you want to keep going from left to right on either screen so the enemies reappear so you can get some more money for the health upgrades, etc., you're more than likely, uh, you're more than welcome actually to farm that out as well. So if you prefer. So, let's do it then, Harney Balls. Let's go to the left. So remember, anytime you see these skeletons, smash these broskies up. And again, uh, depending on what weapon you want, remember, it's the left bumper to switch weapons, whichever you're comfortable with and most prefer. So, of course, there is going to be a couple of enemies that we're going to destroy. Again, always comes in handy for more money. And any boxes, again, will reappear, so make sure to grab everything on your way past. Uh, there is a treasure chest down below, but we can't actually grab that one just yet. In fact, we won't even need to grab it. Uh, we won't even need to grab it at all. So we're going to keep just heading all the way left here, grabbing any money that we can, and heading um, through the temple door on the left now. So that's, yeah, that is where we're going. Heading through the temple door on to the left. Now, um, we're going to go high up on the platform here. Ignore this enemy again. We're just going to smash open these boxes for some more money. Now remember, do not cut this rope on this platform. Do not do that just yet. Uh, so we're just going to uh, jump to the left, go to the other side. Remember, don't cut this. Don't do it. And then we can f uh, simply just head down and head up to the ladder on the other side. So drop down, head to the ladder. Again, you've, uh, for someone who has such skinny legs, incredible that he doesn't break them all the time, jumping from such a height. Uh, but anyway, we're going to climb up, go to the left, and smash the brambles, of course, down here. Now, this is where the music box is. I'll just hurt myself first, then. Now, if you cannot, for whatever particular reason, harpoon dash yourself up, like I cannot do right now, there should be something up there that we can harpoon dash ourselves up. If that is the case and it doesn't work, um, what we need to do is just go to the left outside, go to the left a couple of scenes, or a couple of screens or whatever. Now, remember, this is where the flutamophone player was. Um... I'm not sure if you can just immediately go straight back in and then um, the item will appear, the box will appear up here. If it doesn't appear, just go left outside a couple of screens, come back, and then these boxes should appear. And this is where we can get the second music box and a whole bunch of boxes. All the monies, all, all the monies, all the monies, me, 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 monies. Now remember, if, ah, oh, badass bro, you just beat some brambles all by yourself. Ah. Oh. Now remember, if you've got less money than me, that is obviously because I've gone left a couple more screens, killed a couple more enemies, etc. And that is why. So don't panic though. Again, like I said, you will have plenty of money saved over by the end of the game for absolutely nothing. Oh, one of these monkey things are appeared again. Uh, 
Oh, did it disappear? Oh, that's good. All right, we don't have to kill the monkey thing. Now we can cut the rope anyway. Oh, monkey thing disappeared again. And now we can drop down. Um, we are going to jump across, but we have to actually harpoon... You need to harpoon dash yourself across. Because you're not just going to make it, and you're going to drown a horrific death. Trying to walk into the brambles there and grab the treasure chest as well. So that will already be treasure chest 7 out of 10. So from here, what we can do is just jump straight across again. Uh, we basically need, just need to go up, go to the right, use the old horny bags to summon the boatman. And again, if you didn't get the Oni Hasoto achievement for making the boatman angry for tooting the horn three times, now is your opportunity to get him again. But of course, we should have got that earlier on. So... Use the horn, and then interact with the old Grand Fang Master Diddy, whatever I was calling him. So Shadow Creek is actually a perfect place for farming later on if you need it. Uh, but for now what I'm going to do is head to the waterfall now. So it's not this one, but it is the one on the bottom of the two. So that is where we're going to head to this little teensy tiny teensy weensy little area called the waterfall. Again, we don't have a hat yet, so we can just head there. Again, if you want to go to Oak Tide and upgrade your health now, you're more than welcome to do so again. But as I said, I, I will go there plenty enough times in order to do that anyway, so you don't really need to go out of your way. Uh, now this is pretty much a very quick area, it's more orchestrated scenes, it's basically just story progression. But we do need to collect a yellow key here. So it's a short boat ride, so cheers P Diddy Funk Master Grand Diddy Biddy. There we go, we should be good to go now. Am I moving? Yes, we're all moving. So what we're going to do, we're going to go right. Um, again, there is a hell fountain there if you need it, which is always nice. Um, cut some bushes down on your way, by the way. So anytime you see some grass or some bushes, cut that down. That will, it's basically a little achievement for cutting down 30 bushes, which we can grab on the way of doing stuff. Uh, but in this little area then, there is a yellow key that we are going to grab at the water's edge. Hello. Konnichiwa. So as you keep going to the right for now, let the scene play out, and then at the very right hand side we're going to grab the yellow key, and then we're just going to go all the way back to the left, summon the boatman, and we will be going to the forest. That soup again! That makes me feel better. And who the hell are you standing up there? I was just going to see if she wanted my number because Faraday, since we're gonna stay a couple of days. Um oh never mind then. Well Well, since beautiful lady has gone, uh, we've got the yellow key, we've got absolutely destroyed. And straight out of the temple door, so that's all good. So Go to the right there to just grab your stuff, head to the left of the boatman, and we're going to go to the forest this time, which was the path directly above the waterfall. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome to the forest. They've got fun and games. They've just got a bunch of enemies that want to kill you dead. That is why we don't want to stay a day. We want to go far away. Screw this forest and screw this stuff. Screw it straight up the... No, no, don't do that. Don't do that, lastly. So, what we're going to grab first of all then, after this little scene plays out, is the Lord Gardener achievement for cutting 30 bushes. Now, if you've been doing it um, just sort of randomly as you've been going along anyway, you'll get this quite quickly. But always make sure to be cutting any bushes and any tr little trees down that you possibly can. Um, and that will get you the Lord Gardener achievement. Now, because I've been doing it regardless anyway, here are the bunch of grasses and bushes. I get it pretty much straight away. Uh, but just keep cutting every time you see a couple here on each screen. Just keep cutting what you can. Now, what you can see is our first castaway to rescue here. But we can't actually reach him just yet, of course. So we're going to go to the right. We're going to head up. So harpoon dash your way up. And then we are going to go to the... Um, Left, there is a treasure chest here, a couple of boxes, and our 8 out of 10 treasure chest as well. So now what we can do, you can see the rope where you're going to jump, slash it with the Y button, and drop down, and then press press and hold up on the D-pad, and that is how you actually rescue the castaway. So you can't actually just drop him down and then leave, you actually have to press up on the D-pad. When he disappears and it says another, another castaway saved or whatever that just was, that is when you know you've uh, rescued him, so that's 1 out of 10. So we're going to head back up anyway, because there's a couple of different paths we're going to be having to take. So first of all, we're going to go path one, the upper path. So uh, go to the right, and then we are going to jump across the gap, hit this little molten -y molten bit. And then again, try to not blow yourself up, which would come in handy. You can walk past these boxes, just don't hit it. And then head through into this little cavey cave cave area. Right, so what we're going to do, there's going to be another music box we're going to collect in just a bit. So we're going to head down. Don't worry, there's nothing that can kill you. Again, if you uh, make sure to be cutting the grasses and bushes down to get the Lord Gardener achievement if you don't have it already. Here is the sort of little fiery bit. So we can head up right here. And, and you can probably hear the music box right now. But we need to uh, go up again. Go to the right to dash across. Drop down. Proceed to the right screen. Onto the next screen to the right. There it is. Oh, you had to jump, sorry. It was a bit dark. But there is the music box again. And a bit more grass as well if you want to cut that. So we can use the mouth pole to the right to go to the campfire. That should be music box 4 out of 8 now. So we can continue right and uh, keep keep going right. Ignore the three question marks. I thought it was an enemy. Kept crapping myself, but it wasn't. And here is the exit of the cave. And then what we need to do when we exit out of the belovedness of the cave, um, we're just going to exit, we're going to proceed to the right, and we're going to go all the way to the right until we enter yet another cave. Man, these dudes sure like their goddamn caves. Ta-da! And there it is. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go right, again, cutting the bushes down, just in case. Uh, you can actually drop down here. We're going to go into the next screen as well, so keep going to the right, instead of practicing your moves on nobody. It's like a dude shadow boxing at the gym. Oh, bruh, you can do that at home, can't you? But we're going to drop down here, kill this bramble, jump across the gap, and go into the mouth portal here on the left. We're going to end up on the second castaway. So drop him down, kill these enemies like hell. Ah, oh, bruh, look at that. Three and one, man. I then get all ginger beard off as well. Remember, you have to press up on the D-pad to rescue the castaway. One more castaway, return to safety, and that'll be two out of ten. Um, ah, oh, poor lost one. All he wanted to do was just chill, bro. Anyway, we're going to continue going to the right. Uh, hit these two brambles so you know you don't spite yourself in the old nut bag. And we're going to end up just underneath the mouth portal of where we were. But from now, we're going to keep heading to the right. And we're going to uh, keep heading to the right, smash this lost one right here, and like, another couple of enemies as well. And then when Billy Ballsack is dead, jump up, and we need to dash our way up to the multitude of eyes, hit this thing dead. And, well, that gets us a feather and a bone, which is nice, but it also will, it allows us to progress the story just above 
uh, where we are. That's where we need to go now. But we couldn't have gone there before because he actually um, summons the harpoon for some reason. So head back up anyway. Head to the right. And then head up again. There we go. And then when we go to the right next screen, now we can harpoon dash away across. If you didn't kill that enemy, we wouldn't have been able to because he keeps um, blocking the harpoon somehow. So another couple of enemies here, another couple of old biddies to um, destroy with your sword. <laughs> with your pork sword. Ah, oh, nah, nah, that's, that's, no, I wouldn't, uh, nah, let's not say that. Uh, but that was funny, he just died. Right, another little s flute and phone player scene uh, right here. Yeah, and that's a kind of... And I'm so, so yeah, I'm so, 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 so, what we're going to do from here then, we're going to drop down. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, another enemy to kill here, but what we can do is now flick this switch, switch the switch, switch it open, and that gets us the uh, gate open, but we don't need to do that, we'll just head to the left. Basically, going to the left is just the way we've already been and where we've already gone, so head through this cave door, this temple door, whatever. Now, we're going to be in a cave here. Now, there is some water on the bottom, but you can actually walk through, so you won't actually lose any health. But what you need to do is harpoon dash your way over to the right to go through the mouth pole. There is another castaway, as you can see here. But what you need to do is harpoon dash over to the left. Uh, now, for some reason, I'm starting to have a bit of a... I'm starting to have a bit of a, a, a fit or something. I'm going nuts. I don't know what I'm doing, but there we go. So hop and dash over to the left. That'll give us a platform. You can jump up onto this wall here on the right. Kill any sort of dumpling enemies that are going to appear. And then again, I don't know what I was doing here. But jump up, grab the boxes, hop and dash your way over. And then make sure then to smash this rope here on the left before moving on. Drop back down. Press up on the D-pad to rescue the castaway. Right. So, that should be Castaway 3 out of 10 now. Oh, and a big chunky fly just come out of nowhere. Right, that's not creepy at all. Right, so we need to um, harpoon dash our way to the left now, get that platform going, jump back up. Now, this time what we're going to do is we're going to dash up, dash to the right, and this time we are going to go to the right. So, obviously, um, drop down, and then we're going to head to the right. Oh, lovely. Let's have a little look and light here. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, why? Anyway, drop down, kill yourselves a couple of enemies, and get rid of all the boxes and everything. Uh, yeah, this is not my controller dying, that's just me generally going in. Bat shaz insane. <laughs> nice. So when you've killed everything dead and everything's all good, we're going to head back up to the switch here. We're going to flick the switch. Of course, that's going to open the door to the left of us now. Well, well should we take a little look-see? Well, we can't because that's not the way. What we need to do is just go right into the screen here. Um, now, I'm trying to um, harpoon dash away, but as you can see, there is a cage in the way. So what we need to do... Uh, sorry, just having a look. We can just keep going to the right. Now, it looked like that stone... Could, wouldn't let us go through there, but it actually can. So, <laughs> that's all good. So, what we need to do, harpoon dash your way through to the right there, through the portal mouth. Epic smashing of the fly. Harpoon dash our way up again. And then what we can do now is smash open this box and smash open the... Or get rid of the rope as well. Then from here, what we can do is just tr drop that down. And now that allows us to harpoon dash our way through to the right. And straight up. Baby, that's good. So you happen to dash your way through the portal mouth to go to the right. There we go. Uh, we're going to head up this little makeshift little wall. And again, try not to bomb yourself. I mean, it'll, it'll come in handy if you want. But it's always good just getting rid of the boxes, get rid of some money, have a look at some money. Uh, but from here, what we are going to do is actually just drop down now. Eventually. Ah, hurt myself. And looks like I'm dying. Well, that's unlucky. So we're going to drop down anyway. Um, open up the box and just keep going into this dark door, temple door. So it's a dark door. It's dark door. Dark door. Dark door. D Whatever the hell I'm trying to say. 
Right, we are going to be coming up, there's going to be a, a scene in just a bit where there's a bunch of enemies and we're going to be getting an achievement called the Black Slash Achievement. Now, uh, don't try to go in acid, acid hurts until we get the acid hat later on, but for now, acid hurts. So, uh, you can just uh, harpoon them with the B button of course, that'll kill them dead, which should come in handy. So just harpoon your way uh, across, because of course you will die, as you can see. You will lose health if you go into the water, as you can see. So just be very careful, uh, harpoon dashing your way across. Hiya! And we're going to be doing a bit of harpoon dashing as well. Um, now just go as soon as it drips the acid, smash your way through. Ah, there we go, you should be pretty golden anyway. Harpoon dash your way to the left, and we're going to see a little switch. Now, this is going to come in handy because it's going to get rid of the water. And we don't have to go for a big deathly swim anymore. Hooray! Right, so from here what we can do is... Now, if you want to, there are two ships in a bottle that we can grab. Um, here, if you want to, if you've been collecting them so far. Um, I do end up grabbing the one here, and there is another one to the left of us. There it is, just on the left-hand side. So if you want to grab those, more than welcome to do so. If not, it really doesn't matter, so don't panic here. Beautiful little bunda bag bags about it. Right, so from here, what we're going to do, we're going to head back up this la uh, ladder. And we're going to go to the right this time again. You can harpoon dash your way across. No, it that actually doesn't matter. We're all good. And we can now go to the right. Now, this is a sort of mini boss battle that's coming up. Now, there's... Oh, in fact, it's not even a boss battle, mini boss battle. But this is where we're going to get the backlash achievement. A whole bunch of enemies are going to appear. Now... What we can do, the walls are going to start closing in, so we, so this is kind of a time section, we need to kill the enemies, but this is the only place, really, that we can get the backslash achievement. So, what you need to do, you need to melee an enemy into the air by pressing up on the D-pad and the X button at the same time, and then while they're in the air, you need to harpoon dash yourselves to kill them. Um, now, of course, uh, this may take, we're going to get some smaller enemies in just a bit, which will be a little bit easier, but just keep trying that for now. So. Up on the D-pad and X button, and then when they're in the air, press, uh, and obviously harpoon dash to kill them. So you're pressing, obviously, B and up then to kill them. Um, personally, I would get this achievement here, even if it means that you end up dying a couple of times or whatever. I would personally grab this achievement here. Um, it may take a bit of luck, there we go, so I've managed to just luck my way into that one. But that's how you do that then, so up and X. And then when they're in the air, then it's B and um, B and up. So there we go, half and dash to kill them. Um, but as soon as that's done, just keep killing all the enemies. Again, you're going to keep half and dashing your way. Try to avoid the spikes though, because the spikes obviously can kill you as well. Um, so just keep half and dashing up and rapier sorting everyone until everyone's dead. And that will um, end this little section. And the walls will stop closing in. <laughs> Ooh, that was getting a bit brown pants time there. I kept spiking myself on the bloody walls, as you could see, and ended up uh, <laughs> almost dying. But since we didn't, we're all good. So, we got the Black Slash achievement. Uh, hopefully, you did as well, because there's not a lot of other opportunities to get this. Um, there's a bunch of enemies to kill, of course, but I think in a big, you know, with so many enemies trying to kill you, that is definitely the easiest place to get it. So, we're heading to the right anyway. Um, again, make sure to be cutting all the bushes if you still haven't cut 30 down yet for the Lord Gardener achievement. We're going to grab another treasure chest here, which is 9 out of 10 and the yellow key. And then we can exit through the portal. And then that bit is done. Now, this time the game is going to give us an option to return to Oak Tide or venture forth, as in carry on in the same area. Uh, what we're going to do is return to Oak Tide. So just pre simply press the A button there to return to Oak Tide. And then, of course, we're going to end up back in our little hubby hub hub home hub little delicious hut section. Now, it's going to happen quite a few more times through the game. It's going to ask you if you want to go back to Oak Tide, etc. And this is where, every time we get an opportunity to, when we're in a level, this is where I always choose to go back to Oakdale. Again, we're going to heal up. We're going to upgrade as well. So by now, we should have a lot of money. 
in order to heal up. This should basically be the last time now. I think that's the last health upgrade that we've got. So as you can see, um, we're only an hour and 20 in and I've already upgraded. So if you haven't fully upgraded yet, don't panic because we've got, still got plenty of the game to go. Make sure you're fully upgraded in terms of he um, health right there. And then head into the hat shop. Now I've actually got enough um, items, enough things, enough items to craft with right here. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually the steal vitality from your enemies one first. So that is what we're going to do, steal vitality from your enemies. I've got enough there to craft the hat again. Hopefully if you've been doing a little bit of farming here and there as well, or if you've just been cracking on with the game, hopefully you have as well. But again, like I said, there's plenty of the game left. Um, and if you haven't got it yet, you will definitely be able to get it the next time. Um, so don't worry if you don't get it just yet. Um, but that's the one we're going to go for. Steal vitality from your enemies. And then what we're going to do is travel back to the forest. So we're going to take the second path this time. Oh yeah, this time make sure to actually put the crocodile headgear on. And uh, before going on. So you're going to look kind of snazzy while doing it. Plus, we get to steal the vitality from enemies as well. So, it's a it's a double win. And it hides our triple chin. So, that's a triple chin win. Yay! So again, I'm only going to mention it one more time. Make sure to be cutting the grass down here for the Lord Garter achievement. I assume you would have probably got it by now, though. So um, this will be the last time that I mentioned cutting down the grass. Right, so we can just keep heading all the way to the right this time. No need to go up. Another couple of enemies to kill on your way, of course. But we're basically going to end up to a dark door. It's a dark door that's pretty light so far, so we're going to be happy with that one. So, right, what we're going to do, we're going to go right. We're going to climb up here onto the upper platform, again, if avoiding the acid. Don't walk through the acid either, that hurts you a little bit as well. We'll climb up onto the upper platform, and again, if you want to smash the boxes on the left there, you're more than welcome to do so, but we're going to continue to the right for the time being. Get these little molten bobs over, and we're going to harpoon dash over the other side to break some more molten rocks. And then we're going to go back, well, well, as soon as we, you can destroy the Molten Rocks, there it is. And then what we're going to do from here, we're actually going to go back uh, one room to the left. So go to the left there, dash yourself over, and now we can drop down, kill old Dumpling Ball, or the evolved form of Dumpling Ball. And then we can jump up, Harpoon Dash to the right. So onto the next screen, be careful of course, there's another couple of evolved Dumpling Balls. They got spiked square in the R, so did I. Oh, damn it. Well, that's karma for me. Don't make fun of anyone because it'll happen to you pretty much instantly. So, to the right, to the up now, y'all. And then go to the right screen. Uh, and again, another couple of dumpling balls evolved will um, appear here. They get hurt as well, though. So, if you want to throw something at the uh, bombs and the acid and stuff like that, everything hurts the enemies as well. Smash open the dumpling knobs anyway. And then, when we are done with this bit, we can actually go up through the mouth portal. And apparently hit the acid thing. And dash our way through to the right. Oh, that's very nice. Right, jump your way across. <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> that's camera for you, douchebags. Make sure to grab the golden necklace. That is a crafting item. <laughs> and that's a good thing that they don't have eyes, actually. They can't jump. Uh, so when you've done that, we are going to now basically arrive in a room with a skeleton hanging and a switch above us. So as soon as we kill these little, or break these molten things, there it is. So climb up the ladder. We're going to open up the switch. Oh, pff, a couple of zombies there. Or oh, a couple of lost ones, of course. Oh man, come on. Don't be so harsh, Welsh dude. We, they only just want to see what's going on. They only want to see, oh well, he looks very nice. He could be our new master. Nope, he's just killed us all. Depressing. Right, 
head through the cave anyway. Um, after you can break these boxes if you want, and of course get some more money. And then for some reason I can't grab them, so I'm just going to move on. Let's just move on to the right. Right, now in this area, it's a creepy area, lots of hanging skeletons and stuff like that. But there's going to be a lot of arrow traps and a lot of exploding crates in this area as we uh, proceed to the right one screen. So here is the first set of uh, arrows and explosive crates. So chuck your uh, your bomb at them, your, your harpoon at the bombs. That'll make it a bit easier if you can. You should be able to jump over these crates right here. But again, watch out for the arrows. They're going to come from all types of different directions. One may hit you there, but that's fine. You only lose a tiny bit of health. And here we go. A couple of skeletons, skulls, creepy ass stuff going on again. So, what we're going to do then, we are going to just cut the ropes. So cut all three down if you can, you might be able to grab a bone as well. And what that does as well, it gets rid of the arrows for us, the arrow traps. So, that also comes in handy. So after doing that, that's the way I've done it. Because if you went up here, you would have been arrowed straight in the butt. And as we all know, an arrow in the butt, anything in the butt, hurts. So, more arrow traps right here. So again, jump. Uh, get rid of that one. And then do the same for the next trip. There it is. So it's just about to <laughs> jump in there. And we get away with that one. Right. Same thing here. Just smash this guy down. See if he's got a bone for us. <laughs> well, if you haven't got a bone to pick with us. We're going to come up to... This is the first mini boss fight then. So what's going to happen then? This spider's going to throw arrows at us. And this these ghosts will appear one by one. So just focus on the ghosts. Because they can shoot you from afar. Um, again, the arrow, the spider will drop acid. It will also throw arrows at you, as will the old lady ghost things. So uh, just keep focusing on the, uh, keep focusing on the ghost. As soon as one appears, go straight over, and of course, just uh, watch out for the spider moves anyway. So uh, not too difficult, but just um, focus on getting rid of all four ghosts for now. And then as soon as we kill this last one, the spider's going to drop down. It will st uh, try to begin to stab you, but what you can do is just harpoon yourself over to it, press the Y button a couple of times to absolutely smash that boy dead. So it, it, again, this is a lot easier when you can just harpoon dash your way, smash him dead. And like I said, well, it's easier on the floor. It would have been easier if you could just harpoon dash your way up to him and then just smash him in the air, but there we go. Not literally smash him, but that'll open up the way anyway as soon as you do the little mini boss. So quite easy. Um, now, what we can do is head into this next room. Now we're going to pick up a musket. So there it is. And again, this is another Y button weapon. So like the rapier and the repeater. Again, just like the uh, Rottenwood repeater, I didn't use it all that often, in all fairness. Now and again, it comes in handy, but it's man, it's nothing, nothing too incredible. I generally stuck with the rapier, uh, rapier sword for a lot of the time. So uh, smash open all the boxes. Grab the yellow key from the left, open up the treasure chest, and this, if you've been following along, this will be 10 out of 10, and it will get you the Eldorado achievement. Exit the portal, job done. Now, um, if you didn't get the achievement yet, and you potentially missed one, as we return to Oak Tide again, so just press the A button there to return to Oak Tide. If you didn't get the achievement, you missed the treasure chest, that's fine, we still got... I think I end up grabbing another four or five, but there are still plenty more than that to grab. So you pretty much cannot miss it. You pretty much cannot miss that achievement anyway. So anyway, uh, this is what you should be on. One blue key, three yellow, uh, three castaways, and four out of eight music boxes. Now, in terms of uh, resources, if you didn't get it last time, you should personally now have enough to craft the steel vitality from your enemy's hat. So that's what we're going to do. Again, make sure to go up here if you uh, still need a health upgrade. As you can see, nothing is appearing on my screen, which means we are fully upgraded with health. 
Look at that, and we're only just halfway through the game, so you will get that easily eventually. So let's go and craft us another Hattus, shall we? Now again, if you haven't got it yet, make sure to craft the Steel Vitality from Uranus first. Now, if the only resource I need is some more Skeleton Bones. Um, so again, if you are in desperate need and you want to get these two hats out of the way, just head back to Shadow Creek, and of course, there's a whole bunch of skeletons on the first row. But um, hopefully, anyway, you should have enough to get the Steel Vitality from your enemy's hat, get you the Along the Nile achievement, and um, then we can go. Then we're into the forest. Uh, but it's definitely worth doing. It's definitely worth doing this hat for the upcoming boss battle. Um, otherwise, nah. Otherwise, we, we should be pretty good. So now we're going to go to path three. And basically, this is the last path which will get us the second blue key. So, slicing your dice your way through grass, yeah, you're a hard man, aren't you? Although, I tell you what, if I was able to cut grass with such swift precision, then... Well, it would make cutting my grass in my back garden a lot easier. And plus, my downstairs garden would uh, take a hammer in too, to be fair. Um, yeah, I wonder if Faraday's an actual person who can help me with that. Yeah. Anyway, since we are getting off topic a little bit... Kill the enemies, make sure to grab again, of course, any money and any anything that they drop, of course, any resources for crafting. Now from here we can head up, and then up the ladder. So this is where we're going to the, uh, through the third path. So now we can head to the right. And we are going to go through the cave again. Now, of course, you'll probably have forgotten how we got here last time. So this might look like a dodgy way and a dark door, but it's not. So we can just keep heading all the way to the right until we see the exit, the cave exit. Mr. Slave's exit. And if you know Mr. Slave, then you are depraved and watch too much South Park. Uh, so we're going to head for the Mr. Slave exit right here. There it is. And then for now, again, we're just going to keep on heading to the right. Enemies will appear again, so just uh, be wary and keep your eye out. There is, of course, also a health fountain here if you need it, so give yourself a little splash and wake up. And yeah, that's all you need. So if you've been stabbed plenty of times, just splash some water on your face and you'll heal beautifully. <laughs> well, who knew? Who the hell knew that? Incredible stuff. Right, so again, just keep bashing your way through to the right. Now, remember we went down last time here, but this time, of course, we are just going to keep heading to the right, to the right. To the right now, y'all. Two halves this time. Now that enemy should, uh, the enemy below us should still not be appearing, so we can just head to the right. Couple more enemies here again. Always worth stabbing and slicing. I just stepped on an old lady's head. Again, that could be taken very much out of context if, uh, if uh, you know, used in the wrong way, or you're listening into a different place. Now this is the third path. Then this bridge straight in front of us is now uh, as well. Now uh, we're basically just coming up to the boss battle now, the final boss battle. So. This guy is pretty much called White Cloak, so there he is, he's all like, And honestly, that wasn't me attempting any particular kind of language, that was me just saying body body bar, okay? So before anyone gets pissed off at me, no, that was me just saying body body bar. Alright, so, so don't think I've uh, taken the mick out of anything or anyone. So, heading through the cave anyway. Now, like I said, this boss fight is easier. This boss fight is easier. Purely for the fact that um, we can just keep harpooning him and keep rapiering him. So we're going to have a little bit of a scene here, but when we start... So he's not like a ghost like Yellow Cloak was. So we can harpoon dash and then keep spamming the Y button when we're on him. He then sometimes goes into human form and then disappears to the other side of the screen. Which again is fine. Because uh, again, all we're going to be doing is going on the offensive this time. So harpoon dashing and pressing the Y button to mash the rapier.
No, you're going to see me starting to get a bit a bit crazy with the harpoon. Like now, I'm sort of just trying to, you know, stick the harpoon straight in him straight away. Just take your time. He will charge towards you like that sometimes, so just be uh, quite aware of that. He will drop bombs as well, and, and eventually he will go back into human form. He will also use a spinny attack, so when he gets into human form, just harpoon dash away to him as many times as he can there, and just uh, rapier him again. So that's all he's going to do. He's going to drop a few bombs. He's going to do a little spinny attack sometimes and throw an electrical charge at you as well. You'll get these little dumpling balls as well that will appear, but um, honestly, that's fine. So just stay on the offensive. If you need a break, of course, go to the left-hand side of the screen or the right side. Whichever, wherever this guy is not, give yourself a little bit of a break. And always be on the lookout for boxes of uh, little energy pickups. But be on the offensive and uh, it'll be an easier time than the last one. <laughs> And, uh, well, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So, because we were able to kill the dumpling enemies as well, just sort of randomly as they were just appearing, we're going to grab the second blue key here. That is what was getting us the um, health upgrades as well. So that's what, that's what I mean. We were just on the offensive all the time, and for me, that personally worked. If you were having a hard time with it, again, just, you can either um, wait until he does an attack, then harpoon dash, rape your room a couple of times, go to the left, and then uh, do it that way. So a bit of back and forth. But if not, um, and we're all good anyway, we've been him, we are going to go to the left. To the left now, y'all. Now we've got the Thunderstone. Now, this basically allows the Harpoon to hold an electrical charge. So, uh, we're going to see exactly how it works. Now, let's go to the left. In fact, this would be the Thunderstone, actually. Um, <laughs> so, there we go. We got the map piece, sorry. This is the Thunderstone. Uh, apparently, we're going to evolve into Raichu right now. So, well, there we go. Did anyone ever evolve Pikachu into Raichu? I'm not sure. Anyway, there's the electrical charge socket point there, which is at the top. So you needed to throw your harpoon at that and then harpoon the um, electrical socket to the left. So and we're going to do this only a couple of times through the game, but it does come in handy. Otherwise, you won't be able to <laughs> progress. But anyway, that is that. There is another castaway here. So again, make sure to grab this before uh, exiting and heading out. So we can just uh, harpoon dash our way up. There is a little eyeball. Oh, there's a box you can grab, apparently. And smash this guy down. And remember to hold the up on the D-pad or left stick. Bam. There we go, then. Job done. So that should be four out of ten castaways here. Luckily, it's not a little puzzle. He's all as straightforward as a straight thing up your straightness. Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. So, little cutscene's going to happen here. Again, you can press and hold the A button to skip it if you so wish. All right, scary douchebag. Faraday. Lord Faraday. Right, so what you should have, if you'd be following this guide now, you should have two out of three blue keys, obviously zero yellow keys, four out of ten castaways, and four out of eight music boxes. That's exactly what you should be on by now. Um, if not, you are at the moment able to go back. There's only one castaway, uh, which is in a dark door, and it's the ninth one we grab. Um, a little bit later on. So, at the minute, if you are missing something, uh, have a look at the timestamps below and just see if it, that's one that you've missed, etc. But at the moment, you are able to go back. The point of no return is when we're going to go to the basically final boss with the three blue keys. 
so for now, if you, like I said, if you do miss one, then you can go back, look at the timestamps, see where it is, go back, and you can grab that one. Otherwise, for now, what we're going to do, we're going to see if we can um, upgrade the hat. Again, if you should have probably upgraded all your health by now. And we are still missing a couple of bones. Boner! Bonerifics! In order to um, grab the acid hat. Now, that acid hat, which we need, by the way, comes in insanely good handy. It, especially for the hunter's boss battle as well. Uh, it basically spits out acid at some of the enemies and it comes in mega handy. So, from here, head to the right and down. We're going to the Royal Domain first. Now, you think, oh gosh, we've already gotten two of the three blue keys. We're going to fly through this. Yeah, this is going to take a little bit longer. There's a lot more exploring and there's a lot more things to do um, for <laughs> grabbing the third blue key here. Uh, so, with that one... All we're going to do then from here, we're going to go all the way to the right until there is a dark door and enter that. Boy, this is the lightest dark door I've ever seen. But we've got uh, quite a bit to do. So, go to the right, and we need to interact with the guard. He's not going to let us pass, which is now... This is now a stealth section. If you get caught, you will just come back to this particular area to try again. So, just be very, very careful, of course. So, heading up, going across to the right, and we're going to hide behind these boxes for now. And as you can see, the guards only look left, and they look right. So, as soon as the guards look in right... You need to drop down. Okay, maybe I'm taking my time with this a little bit more. But as soon as he turns right, it's obvious which way he's turning right. Because obviously his uh, little stick shaft thing goes there as well. So you can crouch down by pressing left, um, uh, down on the left stick. And as soon as he turns away, go to the right and immediately harpoon dash your way up. And there we go. So there's no enemies in this area, which is all good, baby. And so you can just climb up, flick the switch here. That's going to open up the gate um, just to the left of us there. So we can, now we can harpoon dash our way up. Don't smash your harpoon yet. Go to the right and then press the B button to get your harpoon back. There's a treasure chest up there as well if you need it, but we'll grab that later on. Drop down. The lady's going to be like, oh, oh, Lord Faraday, you're lovely, lucky man. Drop down once, not all the way because the guard will see you. Go to the right, hide behind these boxes. And as soon as the guard's looking to the right, at the guard at the top is looking at the right, sorry. So the guy, see the guard at the top right-hand corner? As soon as he's looking to the right, harpoon dash your way up and then quickly make your way to the ladder. And then just climb up. But stop here. Don't go all the way up just yet. Because there is another guard here. Wait again until he's looking to the right. And then head to the left behind these boxes. And you can actually just keep heading to the left. Um, I stay here for a second just in case he sees me. Screw that. Now, this is where you can get the treasure chest if you need it. It's always worth grabbing these anyway, because it gives us um, some crafting items, etc. Um, but again, uh, that should now be 11 out of 10. So just drop back down to the right-hand side. Stay here, of course. As soon as he's turning to the right, head up onto the platform and hide behind these boxes. Now, you need to wait until the guard is looking to the right. Climb up on the platform. Stay here. And then when he's looking at the left, then move to the right. And there we go. See, not a problem. And then we just drop down, and then the lady's going to be like, <laughs> You looking so fine, girl. And this bit is not a bit at all. So what's going to happen is, I presume that's Lady Elijah. I presume, maybe, who knows. So anyway, all we've got to do then from here, we're going to be like, Hey, baby, I will give you my number later, but I've got stuff to do right now. Because apparently everyone loves a bit of Lord Faraday. Oh, damn it! The um, uh, platform crumbles, by the way. Grab the flower here that was on the left. Jump over to the right. And and now that's going to fall again. <laughs> Job done. So now all we've got to do is just head all the way to the right until we see a bunch of boxes. It's basically the last sort of scene, if you want, the last screen. So you can either walk along with the lady here at the top. Or you can just go all the way to the right and just hide in the bushes and wait for her to appear. As uh, creepy from a Mo Sizzlack Simpsons episode, does that sound? As <laughs> as the ladies like to call me, hey you behind the bushes. 
So she tosses us a little yellow key. Thank you, honey. You know we're there. You, I'm not very good at stealth, apparently. That's why women are good. They've got like X-ray vision stuff and everything. Men, well, we're, we're, we're pretty useless, aren't we? But you know, we make good stuff. We make good guides. With some of us can cook lovely. But yeah, women, women just know. I don't know how the hell they know everything. It's like you could have literally, you could have literally taken a shit two days ago. And they would have gone, I know what you had for breakfast two days ago. Disgust me. But you, how the hell do you know that? Jesus Christ. They can tell you what you were wearing. You know, you go out with a woman on your first date. And, and then she goes, oh, what, so what were you wearing on our first date? You know, if, if you love me, you'll know. And you go, oh, was it a red dress, blue dress? And they'll go, you were wearing these socks, those shoes, this, these boxers, you know, these top and that. Anyway, we're heading to the falling town next. Um... <laughs> Just uh, bigging up all women here. All of you are my homies. Because, uh, again, women are pretty good. <laughs> Very good, actually. <laughs> Which is um, kind of annoying sometimes. The, they got too much power. Um, but anyway, we're heading to the Fallen Town now. So, this... It looked like a tiny, tiny little section. But, it, this is kind of a biggie. This is kind of a big one. So, well, uh, let's just get through it, shall we? So... <laughs> Again, remember, if you need any resources uh, for crafting, make sure to remember those. For me, again, it was personally the bones that I needed. And this is a perfect place where you can get a lot of the skeletons, uh, get a, a lot of bones from the skeletons. So, again, just be aware so we can craft the acid hat uh, in just a bit. Not too long, though. So we're going to head to the left. Little scenes playing out again. <laughs> <laughs> so, even the lost ones can feel the curse of being the manliest man on this goddamn island. Because nobody else would come here and do this schniz, would they? Right, so, uh, the lost ones are going to follow you. We're going to harpoon ourselves up. Uh, grab some boxes here on the left, if you so wish. Um, but we're going to go to the right here. Now, this is a very quickly timed section. Jump over the gap. Uh, there is a castaway here. Very easy to grab this one. This will be um, castaway 5 out of 10. So, we'll harpoon dash up, and then just jump, jump over. Grab him. Now, there is a music box, and we need to get through it at dawn. Now, I'm going to show you... Um, an unsuccessful way and a very successful way to do it. So, what you need to do is flick open the switch and you need to harpoon dash yourself all the way over to the left. You can't run, it, the gate will close. This is the unsuccessful way. Me just absolutely taking my time sort of doing haphazard crap. I don't know why. And as you can see, the music box at the top left corner there is closed and yeah. Right, so since that's not working, what we're going to do you need to be very smooth and precise, so don't panic. You need to flick the switch, grab the one just to the left of you there, and then just keep heading to the left. So make sure that they're just um, smooth transitions right there, and then that should give us plenty of time to get through. Um, if you manage to grab the music box, which should now be 5 out of 8, and the gate closes behind you, just use the mouth portal to just drop down. So it makes no difference there. So what we can do now is uh, grab these boxes here if you wish for a bit, little bit more money and stuff like that. Yeah, apparently hurt yourself on acid. Hmm, okay. But that should be five, Castaway 5 and Music Box 5. So drop down, go to the left anyway. Drop back down and now we can go through the dark door, which we uh, obviously didn't go through a bit earlier on. Oh, we're getting there. Oh, man. The dark, the dark and door of the life. So, Harpoon Dash up. 
So, um, some of this will crumble, so just be careful. There we go. That's unfortunate for them, broskies. So just jump over to the left there. Um, drop down. Again, grab this bone as well. Hit the skeleton. Anytime you see a skeleton, remember to hit that so you can get a couple of bonerifics. Right, there is an electrical gate here, but we can't actually um, use it yet because our harpoon's not electric electriconic did. So harpoon up. Um, go to the left. Now... The only thing that was here was a lost one, which, again, we decided to slice up with incredible um, accuracy. Poor dude. Now, in this next room, then, when we go across to the right, um, go over to the right, the multi-eyes, get yourself up. A couple of spikes up here. There's a skeleton as well. So what you need to do is harpoon left, immediately go up, and then to the right. Hit the skeleton. See if there's a little bonerific. Are we going to grab one? Uh, apparently not. Um, <laughs> so what are we going to do? Um, we are going to jump into the water. Ah, uh, oh, poor lost ones, dudes. Poor lost ones, broski. We can d dash into the water, dash up, and then we can just throw our harpoon at the electrical charge. Now, if you go into the water, the harpoon will, uh, the electric, the electricity will go off, so you need to leave it there. Come over to this side again, drop down, and then summon your harpoon back. Oh, well, it should automatically be back anyway. So throw it at the charge at the top, the socket, and that'll get us our way in. Oh, I'm sorry, Lost Ones broskies. I keep saying sorry, because you're not actually doing anything, are you? <laughs> so scary. Right. Um, now, what I'm going to do is basically explode myself right here. You don't need to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, there is probably a way to... You can probably just shoot, uh, which I kept forgetting about the guns in all fairness. Anyway, what we're going to do from here is simply head left now into the next door. There we go. We're going to be coming up to another mini-boss soon, the spider ghost mini-boss. So keep heading to the left for the time being anyway. Um, we need to pr uh, harpoon dash our way up, and then we're going to climb up the ladder. And this, when we go left, we're going to harpoon our way up again. Now, to the right is just a cutscene, which we don't actually need to bother doing, at least I don't believe. But we're going to go left, and here it is. So, the four ghosts are going to appear. It's exactly the same as last time. You just need to kill the ghosts one by one. But what the, um, you can stand in the water, but just watch out for the electrical charge. If the electrical charge goes into the water while you're standing in it, that's obviously going to hurt you. So just be aware of that. That's the only new move from here. Otherwise, it's a case of jumping, uh, avoiding the spider's arrows and jumping from platform to platform and just hitting the ghosts as many times as you can until they are all gone. <laughs> And that will be the last spider mini game, or mini boss, sorry, that we will get in the game. So that's all good. So hit the switch here on the left. Make sure to do that before heading back up to the right. And then we are good to go. So what we can do now is we are going to drop down. Drop down again so we can go down the ladder. Head to the left. And there is a gate that has now been opened for us. And there is, of course, as you can see, a little cheeky door on the left to uh, apparently... Um, Pant crappingly yourself further in. So we got a couple of miners going on in here. Hello, give me some, give me your money. But we're not actually going to do that. So for now, we're going to head up. We're going to jump up onto the platform. A couple of enemies to slice and dice here. And as you can see, there's a little electrical charge. Bruh, I've beaten yellow cloaks and white cloaks and all types of cloaks. You guys ain't nothing to me now. Nothing. Sorry to say, sorry, to, sorry for you to find out in this way. But you mean nothing to me now. So, what we need to do then, um, as soon as we kill this enemy as well, there is a little, um, <laughs> well, don't jump into the water with the electrocution there, because there is another electrical 
shooting old bird there at the top. So what we need to do, what I end up doing is basically just go for the shooting arrow old chick first, blow her up and myself up apparently, and then just keep heading for the old bird who just keeps throwing electrical charges and stuff at you there. She keeps disappearing, and for some reason I was going a bit nuts. I couldn't see exactly where it was because there was so much, so much going on here. But that's all I would do. So keep avoiding the electrical charges and just keep trying to kill her dead and then get the little minion enemies later on. Right, okay, we managed to get that one now. So just have a little look around, of course, if you need any upgrades and you need more money and stuff like that and any resources, then we can drop down here and head to the left now to this new area. There's a little bow and arrow old chick, so smash her dead. Uh, not smash her until she's, no, I didn't mean that. So go across, I I'm gonna leave these do some work now. So there we go. Uh, but what we're gonna do from here, we're going to drop down at the platform. So you see me going up? Yeah, you don't need to do that. We need to drop down the platform. And then what you're gonna see is like a door that's already half opened and another electrical door. So go to the right, another couple of bow and arrow enemies here. Whoops, and if you end up managing to fall through the hole, you'd lose a little bit of health, but you start in the same area. Um, <laughs> what a stupid bint. She just, she tried to do a forward roll thinking she was badass and she ended up dying. Hilarious. So you go to the right here, grab another treasure chest, which again is always uh, comes in handy if you need resources, and if you were still after needing the El Dorado achievement. Sorry, buddy, just dropped on your head. The old uh, oh, and he, apparently he died as well. Okay, right. What we're going to do from here? Head back up. So hop and dash up. Go to the right, and then to the right screen once more, once again. And now you need to throw your harpoon onto it. Now, what I ended up having to do was just jump across to the other side and then use the harpoon that way, and then summon it back. That will electrocute that. So what, but, but what you are, should be able to do now is throw your harpoon and you should be able to dash yourself to the left across. You can't obviously go into the water because the electrical charge will disappear, dissipate as it were, so go up, dash yourself across, drop back down, and then go to the left. Now jump up here, so dash yourself up and to the left, and in this little sort of mini platform that we got in between here, dash yourself down, and then just press the B button to grab your harpoon back. Or if it doesn't work for whatever reason the first time, just do it again. Dash yourself back up. There we go. So after you've um, pressed the B button to get your harpoon back, then harpoon dash yourself back up, and then we need to get another bit of electrical charge. You can see there, there is another... Um, one more little electrical gate thing to grab, or electrical socket, so jump all the way back to the right here. And do the old same trickness, bogness, regis. So once it's charged up, dash to the left, take it up now, y'all. To the left now, now. To the left now, now. This time we can just drop straight down. And then don't drop down, because that is full of water. Dash yourself over. And then, of course, just hit it again, and that should be the way... This is the way to Amarolo. Every note I've been hogging my polo. Uh, so, a little bit of a scene here. Just keep heading to the left for now. So again, all we're doing is heading to the left. We're actually coming up close now to the end of this section. There's the exit portal, but we need to grab the yellow key. Now, there is a lot, um, again, if you are still needing some more bonerifics, this is the area which I found the majority of uh, skeletons to crush, kill, destroy, and bone up. <laughs> bone up, sorry. Um, now, I'm killing the lost ones, but they're not actually, again, they're not actually doing anything to us just yet. Um, I'm actually just trying to go for all the skeletons right there, just to see how many bones I can get. I ended up getting quite a few, and this is the area. Because basically, before we get to the next boss battle, 
that is where we are going to need the acid hat because it's going to come in a, a bit, a, quite a bit of handiness to be honest. Uh, we'll just climb up the ladder. Here is the flute, the flute guy. There's another bone for us, so that's again, that's all good. Like I said, if you still didn't have enough to uh, get the acid hat, um, just go to Shadow Creek. Uh, if you remember, because there will be a lot, a uh, lot of skeletons and stuff, and a lot of resources to get and farm in that level. So all we're doing when we climb up the ladder here, we're gonna go go to the right again, grab some skeletons as well, a couple of bones. Oh, look at me, I'm boned up now. I've got a triple boner right here, like for my inventory. Uh, that, that's what I meant, of course. Yeah. Uh, so we need to dash our way up. Now what's going to happen is, when we flick this switch, it's going to close the left door, but it'll open up the right one. And you'll think, well, what can possibly go, what can possibly go wrong? And this is exactly what's going to happen. As soon as we click this yellow key, the lost ones are going to go completely batshnaz bonkers. We need to harpoon dash our way up here, by the way. So they're going to start attacking you. And what you need to do, every time some get on you, you need to just press the X button to throw them off. So don't worry about, we just need to get out of here now. So don't worry about attacking all these because they're, they're going to be an insane amount of numbers in the droves. So we need to just keep flicking these off and then half and dash our way up eventually. And then flick the switch. So just flick the switch here so the left side opens. Again, uh, just keep pressing the X button if you keep getting attacked and everything. Just keep going, keep going. We need to drop back down the ladder here. We need to climb up now to get onto the platforms. Keep jumping to the right. Keep jumping to the right, and then, ah, oh, son of a, okay, well, almost. <laughs> so what we need to do is actually dash your way across to the right right there. I managed to, this will always happen though, as soon as you get to the exit portal, this guy will knock you out the way. If you fall down off the platform again, go to the left, climb up the ladder and keep jumping across the platforms. If not, um, you can uh, dash, harpoon dash your way up. Ah, oh, damn it, look at these dudes. Uh, and then you can literally just about manage to get to the exit portal. That bit it can be a little bit trickier than was first intended, uh, in all fairness. Um, but it's literally, because they just keep coming from everywhere, so there's no point fighting them. But once we've got that and we're all good, um, we, have now, we are now done with the fallen town. So now what we can do is just keep heading all the way to the right until we get back out. And um, we end up back in Diddy Dockmaster's... Boatmaster, whatever the hell I was calling him earlier on. So there we go. We're going to speak to him for a little bit. Now, at this point of the guide, we should have two or three blue keys, two yellow keys, five castaways, and five music boxes. And we are going to awaken ourselves in Oak Tide, back home. Num -num. So then, as is per, um, we should now uh, be able to craft the um, acid hat. You should have everything fully upgraded in terms of your health. So you should have that upgraded. Again, drink some soup if you need in some uh, health. Uh, make sure that uh, that is as full. As full as yourself after a good Chinese meal. Oh, I could do with a Chinese right now, actually. Uh, so by now, you should have enough resources. Now, I... Uh, by now, like I said, I've got it, so I'm going to grab it. I've got enough feathers and everything. If you do not, I highly advise going back to Shadow Creek and getting whatever it is that you need. Whether that is feathers, which you can get from um, loot boxes and uh, fallen enemies and stuff like that. And if you need bones again, Shadow Creek would be the same place to do it. That's where I would go to farm items. But now, at this point, I would definitely create that hat, the No Longer Fear the Burn of Acid hat, and continuously wear it for the rest of the game. So go to Shadow Creek if you need to farm some upgrading equipment. Otherwise, we're going to head now to the old archives. Um, because there is a boss battle in this area, which comes in mega handy. Because what this hat does is when you're hitting and killing enemies, it spurts out acid. So if you've got a couple of enemies around you at a time, god damn, that is some handy stuff to have where it hurts the enemies. Um, 
Now, pretty much you will get an achievement that you cannot miss with the acid. It's uh, the Lime Sour achievement for killing five enemies with acid. And since we're going to kill a lot of enemies throughout the rest of the game still, um, we've got roughly about an hour and a few minutes left now. Um, but only five enemies with acid, you, you're going to get that one regardless. So, when we get to the old archives here, what we're going to do, this is a shorter section, but like I said, it does have quite a tough boss battle, because there's three of them. And we all know three sucks. Three at once sucks. But again, I, I, there was a little trick that I ended up doing. I, I don't know if it was intentional, so I just walked completely through brambles for some reason. Uh, but again, I'll just come to that uh, in just a little bit. So for now, we're going to head, keep heading to the right. And head... Nope, head to the right again, because there is no way that we can go up just yet. Not until this screen, anyway. Ah, dude, well, apparently we're going to smash open this old lady first, anyway. Wait, I keep saying things wrong about old ladies. <laughs> Damn. Alright, so then, once all the enemies are dead then, I suppose when we're up on this platform, which obviously you see me go into the right screen, dashing your way up, there's going to be another enemy here to kill, which is fine. Um, and then eventually we are going to get the Lime Sour one. If you didn't get it yet, like I said, we'll get that one eventually anyway. Um, these guys, you can just um, pay $5 for a random uh, crafting item, which again, that does actually come in quite handy. So dash your way up, kill enemy broski right here. We're going to see Castaway 6 out of 10 right there. So make sure to cut him down and send him on his way. He looks kind of like a lost one Keanu Reeves or something there. But anyway, that should be Castaway 6 out of 10 when you get the message. One more Castaway, cast to safety. Thank you. So we can drop back down now and enter the large door here on the right. Now there is, an, uh, there is a hell fountain here if you do need it, which... Well, that comes in handy. There it is. So the health fountain, if you need it, as you can see, I do. That lots. <laughs> so when we've done that, we should now have the two yellow keys in order for us to proceed. So we can open the door, go to the right, and slash the wood uh, when we get there. So there's a bunch of wood that we need to destroy. There it is. Woody time. Right. So what we're going to do, dash to the right, but then immediately go up. So don't go to the right again. We're going to harpoon our way up. We're going to go for Castaway 7 and another treasure chest. So smash the boards out of the way. Dash yourself up. I mean, you've got to actually move to the left or right. But there we go. So there's the next treasure chest again, if needed. Just gives us another golden golden shower. Sorry, golden necklace. Um, put a platform there on the left and then cut the castaway down. Press up on the D-pad there to send him on his way. One more castaway. Return to safety. Why, spank you very much. Well, that's Castaway 7 out of 10 now. So, we can drop back down, continue to the right. Of course, we need to be dashing our way to the right. Here, we need to go up once again. We're going to be finding a music box this time. So, from here, go up. There it is. Fly yourself over. And, I mean, it's coming. The music box is coming. We've just got a, a few little uh, screens to get through first. So, you can smash these books out of the way if you, if you really hate reading. Uh, just go to the right anyway. Now you need to jump, and then dash your way over to the right, there it is, and we're going to drop to the right hand side, keep going to the right as soon as we kill these little, oh we haven't seen these little dumping balls for a while have we? And this is the room where the music box is then, so just kill everything in here for the for, for time being. <laughs> So there we go then, that's the Lime Sour achievement. Now there is another skeleton here, just in case you need any bones. There is another treasure chest in this room, in case you need that. And on the bottom right hand side there is the next music box. So remember that is that you should now be on music box 6 out of 8. Now what we're going to do after we kill that guy, well that guy that's not moving, we're going to just drop down here. And there we go. A couple of little uh, dumpling balls right there. The old uh, first evolution style dumpling balls. And then we're going to flick the switch. Now, as you can see, that is going to open the gate below us. And then we're going to harpoon dash back up. We're going to go to the left. And then we're going to fall down to another screen. 
So keep going to the left and then we're going to drop back down. So now we can go to the right and through the gate that just opened up for us. Wow, that's nice. And then we're just going to continue right until we reach yet another dark door. There it is. Wow. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it's like I knew what was coming, huh? Right, so this is actually where the hunters, the three hunters boss battle is in just a moment. And I'll try and give you the best advice I can. For me personally, I did find this the trickiest boss, even uh, even more so than the final boss in all fairness. And again, that's just because you got three just trying to get inside your ass at all times. And as we know, three doesn't fit into one. Ba one barely fits into one, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, but still, just keep heading to the right for now. Story's going to unfold a bit. Uh, we're going to continue walking to the right. We're going to come up to a little ladder. There it is. So we are going to climb. <laughs> Sorry about the joke earlier on. Ooh. Three into one. <laughs> Can go. Depends on the size, doesn't it? So we're going to harpoon our way to the right, to the up. Uh, smash the brambles. Drop down into the mouthpiece and drop down into the mouthpiece. Uh, hit the molten on the left. Go through. And then we are going to... Um, go down and then we're gonna end up on this one hit this molten once and then we're gonna drop down again hit the molten again It's very creepy actually that this game has a, such an incredible tense atmospheric Well atmosphere. It's just incredible. And this is where the hunters boss battle is then so three are gonna be attacking you One has got six arms one shooting a musket and one's leaving a bomb now, it's really hard to focus, because they're all trying to get at you at once, it's hard to focus on the one. So what you need to do, or what I found was easier, was um, getting to the left side of them and just keep attacking them so they ended up on the right-hand side, right up against the wall. So harpoon dash in your way. So try and get onto the left side of them if you can. And then what you need to do then, again, there are uh, little health pickups if you need them at the top as well. So. Two of them have incredibly got here, so I've managed to get them on top of the wall, so you can just keep rapier in your way, avoid ignoring everything for now, just keep smashing your way through, just keep being on the attack, and that actually kills two of them. And then there's the um, final one, and that's it. Now, that, I just made that seem easier as hell, but they ended up... What happened was, I managed to get on their left side, keep attacking them on the right, so they were up against the wall, and all three of them just stayed there. Like, of course, they were attacking me as well. Um, so if not, what I would highly advise... Of course, since I had the acid hat on, I give them ad additional damage as well. As we just keep heading to the right, right here, into this little treasure room. So that is why they were able to die easy, and that is why we need the acid hat. But otherwise, what you could do if you wanted was just um, focus on one at a time. So um, the attack plan is the same for all of them. You just need to uh, have, have avoided their projectiles, use the harpoon dash and rapier attacks. But if you focused on each one individually, um, depending on whatever one you want, um, if you wanted to get rid of the one that was shooting first, as we're going to return to Oak Tide once again, we've managed to get the final map piece as well. Um, sorry, I know I'm just waffling on a bit there, but I genuinely made that seem easy. But I did die the first time because I couldn't focus on the one uh, because I was just getting attacked from absolutely all angles, but you should be on two, zero, seven, and six, by the way, now. Um, so somehow, again, I don't know if it was just luck that done that, but I was able to put them all onto the right-hand side wall, kill them dead. Anyway, whichever way and however way you do it, hopefully you get that and you're not stuck in it too long. But I genuinely found that the toughest boss fight in the game. But anyway, since we are, and we are back here in Oak Tide. You should now have all the health upgrades. You should have all of the um, hats as well. Or, or I say all the hats, the two hats. If you want to create another hat, that's fine. But I personally suggest sticking with the acid hat. Let's uh, heal up as well. I personally just sticking with the acid hat because it deals a good bit of additional damage to everyone. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing now is just heading to the wind shrine. Now, the wind shrine is... Not really a level, it's more of a sort of, a little bit of a walking tutorial as we get our final weapon of the game, the Moonblade. Uh, there it is, just below us there, the Wind Shrine. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you're thinking, ah, oh, Christ, another weapon to... Uh, again, make sure you got your acid hat on, as always, the feather hat. Now, the Moonblade is... It, it's kind of like the Harpoon. So basically, this will be your last Y button attack weapon, and again, this is the one that 
I highly advise, rec I highly recommend using for the rest of the game. So it's a, it's another game mechanic here. It is another additional game mechanic. So it's a, got his own dash ability. So it's exactly like the harpoon. So what you need to do when you press the Y button, you stab the moon blade into the ground, and then you move somewhere, press the Y button again, and then you dash to the moon blade. So rather than the harpoon coming to you, you dash to the moon blade. So I thought, ah, Christ, because I kind of dislike late game mechanics. When you've been so used to the mechanics and the buttons and everything so far, and then you've got to get used to another thing, sort of getting quite close to the end of the game, it can be a bit annoying. But this one isn't too bad when you get used to it easily. So anyway, we're going to be heading up the elevator. We're just going to be heading all the way to the right uh, to grab the moon blade, head all the way to the left, down, pick up the flower off um, Lady Elijah right here. I assume that's Elijah. And then we just head all the way back to the boat, so nothing else really much to talk about. Right, Miagen Schmagen. Yeah, that's it, boy. Moonblade. Moonblade. Right, so now where we're heading is for the Philap Islands, which was just to the right of it, I believe, if I was looking, which I wasn't. Sorry. But we're heading to the Philap Islands. Now, this is where the next boss battle is, but we've got quite a few things to do before we get to said boss battle. Um, and this is the sort of last area where there is a lot going on. So after we beat the third boss... Um, we'll, we'll pretty much start heading towards the end of the game. Uh, but what we're going to do, like I said, this is... Now, as I mentioned with the Moonblade earlier, you stab the Moonblade into the ground with the Y button. Wherever it is, that's fine. So here, press the Y button, that opens up the gate. So go through. So just go through the gate first, and then just uh, go ahead and press the Y button, and that'll come back to you. Press the Y button here, so stick the Moonblade in the ground between the two gates. One's open and one's closed. Press B and hold up on the um, harpoon. 
and then you can press the Y button to dash through. So there you go. So that's how handy that one is. So you can get through places that you couldn't before. Um, right, so for now what we can do is just head into this little cave here anyway. And now we can just keep heading to the right, ignoring and um, watching out. There's been a little bit of a time session here for the... Ah! That was funny. Um, little bits of volcanoes and stuff, little dumplings and, ha and things like that. So every time, if you try to attack an enemy, the Moonblade will get stuck into the ground. So if it gets stuck into the ground, just press the Y button and press the Y button again. So basically, double tap the Y button and you're either guaranteed to hit an enemy twice or you'll just have the Moonblade back. So from here, what you need to do, go over the volcano. Again, sorry, I just, I think I just, no, there is a ladder that I'm looking for, and it is on the right side of the screen, which is where we were, so from here, so apologies about that, jump over, jump over the volcano again, and then just head to the right, now here is where the ladder is, because we're going to obviously go and get a couple of music boxes and stuff, uh, and, the, and another castaway, so from here then what we're going to do, uh, we're going to drop down, and we're going to head to the left, and left again, and then you need to do a, a, a triple dash, or a double dash. Did somebody say, menu log? Uh, it hasn't got the same ring as Just Eat, is it, or, uh, the, my Aussie friends? Although you're probably used to menu log by now, aren't you? So, uh, chuck a platform over then, dash yourself over, and then dash yourself up. That's what you're supposed to do. So just stand on the platform, jump, and then dash yourself up. <laughs> you almost uh, died twice there, or lost a lot of health twice. From here, what we need to do is go into the cave. So there was actually, there was actually nothing at the top of us there. There is the castaway, and here's another health fountain for us to grab. So we are gonna grab that little health fountain. So from here, now be careful, there is an enemy that's gonna start flinging arrows and stuff at you here, and he's gonna start popping out. There he just went. Tell you what, it's like he's giving birth then or something. So drop down, kill him dead if you didn't already. Now, you need to put your moon blade on this platform, jump back up, and then when it gets to the other side, then you can press the Y button again to dash over, and then jump up, up, up and away where the music is your fantasy. So, uh, smash everything in here for another couple of items and everything. Remember, because we've got the acid at on us, we grab another two treasure chests here as well. So a couple of feathers, that uh, comes in handy. So yes, because we've got our acid hat on, acid does not hurt us, which comes in handy for this section. It is a whole bunch of acid there. Drop in, and we do not get hurt. It's mad what a hat does to you. So that's all you want. If you don't want to get hurt by anyone or anything, just put just put like a, a you know a heartbreaking message on your hat, and you won't get heartbroken anymore. So watch out for the bomb right there. Um, but there is a treasure chest. You don't actually have to grab it by now. You should have got the Eldorado achievement. Um, oh, we can just bomb that. Get the treasure chest, jump up to grab the next music box, which will be number seven out of eight. So after you've grabbed everything in here and we've got all the money and everything, we can now head to the left. We can, again, just avoid the uh, explosive boxes if you wish. You can harpoon dash your way um, up, get yourself a little platform, jump up and to the left. And now we are onto the castaway box. So smash open the box. Get the castaway gone, and that is going to be castaway 8 out of 10. There we go. Job done. Right, so that is music box 7 out of 8, castaway 8 out of 10, and that is this for this area. So you shouldn't need any health. So from now, we can just exit back out. We can now go to the right. And then in the room with the ladder, so if we just, um, just go to the other side once again. There you go, so you should be able to just harpoon your way across, so harpoon your way across and across and across and across and across and across, across, across. Yeah, exactly, you know, you could probably do it smoother than me. Uh, jump across the gap, jump back up. Now, if you wanted to, you can go further right for a treasure chest, or we can just go back up. Of course, we should all have the Eldorado achievement by now for collecting 10 treasure chests, so we've just gone back up. So, now we can head through the exit door. There we go. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to make our way to the right. A couple of enemies are going to appear here, so, well, get your fighting head on ready. That one's buckle and fanny, you're done. We're going to stick the Moonblade in here to extend the bridge. Now, of course, just keep going until you're over it. And there we go. So now we can press the um, Y button there to grab it. No, the B button, sorry, to grab it back. 
Sorry, the Y button would help you dash over, wouldn't it? So go to the right, keep going to the right, and then what we're going to do is come up to a door that requires two yellow keys. Now, that is where the next boss is, but we don't have them yet. So we need to go up to the left and to the left. This is where another shop is if you need some random items. You should have plenty of money uh, again. So if you need random items, if you need any more items for another hat, for the acid hat or whatever, uh, which you shouldn't buy now, but they do come in handy. So jump across, up and then across, which is exactly what I didn't manage to do here. So there are two paths. This is the first one we're going up to get the final music box. So we're going to climb up. It's up and then up again onto the platform. And we're going to do the same again. So drop down, but then immediately grab the... Um, uh, harpoon up to <laughs> harpoon up and then to the right. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say there. And then we can harpoon our way up again. And once again, we're going to do the same thing: harpoon our way up, harpoon our way to the very left. So not on the top platform, but the middle platform first. There we go. Just harpoon your way across. There we go. And the final music box is just underneath this ladder. We've already just collected. You probably missed it on screen there. But that is what should get you the romance achievement. And now we don't have to look out for any more romance or any more music boxes. So that should be 8 out of 8. Again, if there is one that you are missing, have a look at the timestamps below. Take a look and then just... Um, you can actually, like I said, go through all of the levels again just to see um, which ones there are. But again, remember the ones in the dark doors as we go through this dark door here. Once it's closed, it's closed forever. But anything else, you can always have a little look around in. Right then, so once we have done that, now, this is very important. There is a castaway to rescue here. Now, if you've exited this dark door without rescuing that castaway, you will be unable to unlock the hope achievement in this playthrough, and you cannot return here, which means you will have to do a new playthrough just to collect all 10 castaways again. So that is what we're going to do. We're just going to go and grab the this next castaway first, which would be 9 out of 10. So from here, we po uh, pop open the moon blade here, Stab it in the ground to extend this little bridge. And then what we're going to do is jump over to the platform and then grab the moon blade back so we can drop down a screen. There will be an enemy here straight away, so give, kill the evolved dumpling. So from here, what we're going to do after we kick some ass, once again, whoa, whoa, see his explosion? Yes. We're going to go to the right. Well, there's nothing over to the left other than death and misery. So jump up. Oh, God damn these. <laughs> What a douchebag! He just fell and drowned. Drowned. So we're going to uh, jump on the left of uh, the lowest cage right here and just go over to the other side. Um, no, there is probably an easier way of doing this. But for some reason I'm making life quite difficult for myself. Yeah, stand on the very left of the edge. And we can break our way in. Here is the next castaway, which will be... Uh, castaway... That should be 9 out of 10, yes. So, once you got this castaway... Then you shouldn't have any worries about accidentally missing him and then having to replay the entire game again, which would be an absolute sucker punch to the old Janet or the old uh, Nads, as it were. So I'll climb up the ladder anyway. There's going to be a gate blocking our way, so we have to uh, basically open it. So uh, just jump, and uh, we need to open up. Uh, we basically need to uh, get rid of this rope. Now, for, <laughs> for whatever reason, the moon blade just doesn't seem to be working. So, uh, again, press the left bumper, switch to your rapier sword, or rapier. I feel weird when I say it the other way. Your other sword, your tiny little meat sword, and uh, cut it straight away. Should be good. There we go. So that gives us a little little thing to jump on now. So that is all good. So we're going to jump to the left cage again. Go to the left, but don't leave the screen. We're going to harpoon dash our way up. Eventually, we are going to dash our way up. Oh, come on, bro. Dash it. Okay, there we go. So dash up. So we need to dash up and then quickly dash up again. So we're on a platform one. There you go. So it should be a platform on the top and then simply jump up. And then <laughs> what we do need to do is uh, put a blade... Uh, we need to put our moon blade in the blade holder. So, of course, press B to get your harpoon back when you're at the top. Then press the Y button to stick your moon blade where the sun don't shine. There it is. And then what that's going to do is um also if you're finding it hard to jump up there what you can do is you can backtrack to the platform that you extended to the blade earlier go up and to the right and then you can make it to the same place so that so if you go left and then up and then go right that you can make it to the same place uh just in case you were having troubles with jumping right there so 
that's that opens up the gate that we need to go through now. Go through the gate, then grab your moon sword back. And then from here, we can just go, well, basically straight into the next cave. So that is what we will do. So, um, yeah, when we are here, then it's going to turn into eventually a big, big screen. So you're just going to smash this guy, see if there's anything. There's nothing to the left, so we can just keep on going to the right. And here it is. It's a big screen, and you think there's lots to do, but there's really, really not. Which is slicey and dicey. So, moon, moon. M make our way up. Interact with the two switches that, that, so that the two gates are open. So as you can see there, the two gates are open. Now drop back down. Go past the second open gate. So where the little eyeball thing is. Put your moon sword down here. And then what we can do is um, slingshot our way back up. I've already forgotten what, how, how it is. Interact with both the switches again. And then we can just press the Y button to... Uh, end up right back where the moon sword is so, so now we are here with the open gate that gives us the yellow key eventually that's going to get us the yellow key now there is a treasure chest here as well um i'm not going to bother getting it but you just have to go up to the right and then come back down etc so that's if you really want it but we're not going to bother we exit this and that is pretty much uh, all done so again we you want to make sure that you've got the uh, as we are going to venture forth this time. So this time we're going to venture forth. Just on about, you better have made sure that, that we got you got the final castaway, which is the ninth, sorry, the ninth castaway, which you should have been doing, uh, which you should have done if you got the guy, if you've been following the guide, which I hope you have, and I hope I've been good. Otherwise, well, that's awkward, and I suck. Anyway, that is the first path complete now. Um... So yeah, we didn't go back to Oak Tide because we've got all the upgrades, we've got enough health, etc, etc, so we should be good to go. So we can just jump all the way down, all the way down here, and to the left you can see a little cave entrance. So that is what we're going for next, so straight into the cave, straight into path 2, and this is where we're going to get the final castaway. So we don't have to worry about that anymore, but we can jump to the right and start slicing and dicing some chopped tomatoes. What a bunch of douche nozzles. ham -lirious. Right, so make your way over to the right. Jump up. And when you drop down, as you can see from the ladder, grab this last castaway. And uh, sorry, I've done that li a little bit quick there. But you jump up on the platform, go down the ladder immediately to your left. And this will be your last and final castaway. Hooray! Job done. So we don't have to worry about music boxes or castaways anymore. So as we go back up, go to the left. There is this enemy with the claw. Now, I sort of hit him twice, and then he decided to disappear. Right, okay, that, that'll do me. Um, so you can just um, keep harpoon dashing him if you want to, but for some reason, he sort of... Yeah, I don't know what happens, but we make our way up anyway. Kill this broski, because he ends up following you. So we make our way up, and then we make our way up again. We're going to kill this enemy here, and there is someone who is... In fact, there's not someone, but it is something that constantly throws some arrows at ye. And then from here, when we're at the top, we're going to go to the right. All the way to the right. And we're going to go through the next dark door. Now, this is where I personally ended up getting the Icarus achievement for basically uh, killing yourself from a great height. Um... If you don't get it here, there is another place you can get it, and that is um, on the boss fight on this level. Uh, basically, you can jump up about halfway up the tower and drop all the way down. So for now, what you're going to see then is us jumping up. So climb down the ladder, sorry. So let's climb down the ladder, we jump up, we kill or we just wait. We basically need to wait for around 30 seconds to a minute. And that is all we need to do. Obviously, if you don't wait long enough, you are not going to... Um, obviously, you're not going to die. And then that will void... You won't be able to get the achievement that way. So, just wait. I think this is pretty much now enough time. So, what we can do is just drop down. And that is plenty of time. So, you end up on these collapsed platforms. That'll be the Icarus achievement. So, again, just make sure to wait for about a minute or so before dropping down. Otherwise, what we can do is just drop straight down. Go straight down the elevator. Now what's going to happen is, if you if you come down here the first time, a couple of enemies are going to start uh, popping down. It is the evolved dumplings, as it were. 
Uh, so they're going to pop down and start. You're going to have to start doing a bit of fighting for them. Otherwise, because I've done it the one time. Oh, there they are. Then they get there eventually. But what we need to do when the uh, when this collapses here, we need to quickly harpoon dash ourselves up onto the platform and to the left. So you need to do that before going down all the way. Otherwise, you will die on the spikes. So very quickly you have to do that. But once you've done it, well, you're all golden as nugget balls. You're all good. So jumping down into the water. We can now climb the ladder here on the right. And this is kind of like a linear path for the time being. So we're just going right up the ladder and then left up the ladder. But we are going to be coming up to some electrical puzzles, which do look complicated, but I figured all I figured them all out for you. So there will be not a lot of complications here. So up we go then. Um, you're gonna see this a little electrical socket start charging out. What you need to do is um, harpoon dash your way up to to above the ledge where we're standing right now and then there's the electrical socket so you just need to stand by it once that zaps we can just jump down and the gate will be open for us right lovely that's not bad for the first bit couple of enemies to destroy here so get whip your sword and shove it up where the sun don't shine for them And then if we go right, but not too far right, you're going to see that the whole water is full of electric, and as we all know, well, that just ain't going to work. So what we need to do from here, we're going to drop down to the ladder. This is where the first puzzle is then. So what you need to do, you've got four knobs, uh, two on the left and two on the right. So this one I'm hitting, don't worry about that for now. We'll come back to that later on. Uh, but what we need to do is hit the top one and until the sort of long nozzle, if you will, is pointing to the right. So just uh, hit the X button on it twice until it's pointing to the right. And then the one just underneath that, we need to hit it once so that it is pointing up. So again, not this one. Ignore me. I'm just, uh, I don't know why I keep hitting this one. Probably because it's funny looking. Um, but you need to drop down anyway. So hit it once so it's pointing up. Wait until it's shooting. And then that is going to open up the gate for us. Lovely jobly. So into this next screen here, we're going to harpoon dash away up. Stick our moon sword in, almost. Yep, square in the blade holder. So get to it. Right, that opens up the gate for us below. Now we need to go back to the previous room. Now the two on the right, that is exactly what it should be like. So it's up to the right and then down and to the right. So just go to the next room. And then that should be up and to the right. So they should already be like that. So apologies if that was a bit quick there. Um, but that is how you do that puzzle right there. Um, I think it was only the, the very two left ones in the previous room that we had to change. And the rest were pretty much golden away. But apologies, I was a bit quick there. Um, so, for this bit then, all we need to do is just stand back and throw your harpoon square in the explosives. But now it's... Nya, nya, nya. It's dark time with morningless nights fall. I will... Well, I'll just take a nap, won't I? That's all I, that's all I can do in the morningless night. So, what we need to do to progress, it's all dark, but if you stick your moon sword square in the ground with the white button, it gives us some light. Now, a couple of random dumpling enemies are going to appear out of absolutely nowhere in just a bit. So for now, just keep going to the left, and then every time we get into a bit of dark, just get your moon sword and then put it down in the ground. So, what we're doing then, you can go into the water now, that is fine and dandy. Uh, but we're basically heading back the way we came, where the electrical puzzle was in the first, very first room. So just jump up onto the platforms. You know, these eyes sort of give you a little tiny bit of light, but as I said, you are eventually going to get some dumpling enemies, and you're going to hear when they start um, appearing. So you actually need to go up the platform. You can't actually go across now, so go across and then straight down. There we go. Now one will appear in this room. You can already hear him going crunch, crunch, munch, munch. There he is. Hello, my friend. So you can just press the X button there to melee him. Yeah, that's not going to be too bad. Um, now, the electricity is still on. Hilariously, I managed to get a ball of electric going completely nuts, which makes our little dumpling friend go a little bit... <laughs> it does make it go a little bit, little bit insane in the membrane, a bit psycho. But we'll just finish him off. And electrocute ourselves in the process, apparently. So, go up. Now, quickly get your moon sword and put it back into the sword. There's one from behind you, of course, so be careful. There we go. Keep going to the right. 
There is another one that's going to come down from the right as well. There he is. So again, X button to just melee the absolute mouth of him. You cheeky gits. Keep going to the right. Again, there is another one in this room. He's going to be quite close. And in fact, I think I just... Yeah, I accidentally whacked him with the Y. I accidentally whacked him with Moon Sword there. So, well, that worked out rather well, didn't it? Right, keep going. Keep doing the same thing you've been doing. And eventually, you're going to come into this new room. So, what we can do is just drop down. Just keep going. Again, there is going to be another one here. There he is. So, smash him. Deader than a piece of breader up the cheddar McFledder. Into this new room. Here's a skull skeleton if you need a little bone. We can't go to the right and grab the key just yet. We need to go up, as you can see. We ain't getting in there. Not without a fight or opening the switch. So let's go up to the sword. There is another enemy here. So just slash him down. Like, oh my god, you are so goddamn cute. Right, we can go to the left now. Because now we can actually grab this switch. There is another enemy here directly in front of you. So be careful. There it is. So open up the switch. That'll open up the gate on the bottom. So we can just drop that straight down the ladder. Dumpling will appear. There he is. Very obvious where he was. And we can grab the key. Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, we got the key now. Right, we can just uh, moon, uh, moon our way up. Uh, moon our way up. Into the exit portal to finish the level. So that gives us the key. So now we should have two... Now, what I'm doing is actually going back to Oak, Oak Tide. So I'm going back home, but you should have two blue keys, two yellow keys, ten castaways, and eight music boxes. So those two kinds of collectibles are done, as we'll be able to see in just a bit. Uh, but I'm only going... So there you go. Two, two, ten, and eight. That's exactly what you should be on. And if you are, hooray! Congratulations! Right, so the only reason I've come back to Oak Tide is... We will need to go back to the Philap Islands, but there is a boss battle coming up. So, if you need to heal, I highly advise healing full, because of course, the boss battle... You just gotta, haven't you? You just gotta heal healy fully. But in terms of hats, like I said, I would highly recommend sticking with the Acid Hat. Especially for this boss, because it does get him deader quicker. Yeah, that'll do him. Uh, so make sure you're all fully healed. Uh, again, you can go into the hat place if you want, but there's really no need for that right now. There's no other achievements uh, tied to it. So let us once again head back to the Philap, the Flap Flap Islands, the old Flappy Bag Islands. Now, this boss, he's not as bad as I thought he was going to be, in all fairness. If you try to go straight on with the offensive, like we did with the White Cloak second boss, honestly, you're not going to get very far. So this boss has basically got two moves, and you'll see when he's about to sort of super speed dash into you, um, like a big symbol will come across the uh, will come across the screen, so you just have to dodge that. And he will throw projectiles at you as well, and he has a, a weapon similar to the Moonblade. So he's got some powerful dash attacks, sword spikes... It's, uh, but it's not too bad. What we're going to need to do is he's going to have a moon blade stuck into the ground. So what you need to do is go immediately to that moon blade. And that will go across to this boss and it will stun him for a couple of seconds. Which will allow you to harpoon dash yourself over and give him a couple of whacks. And then he'll move further up the tower. So you'll see exactly what I mean now. But we're just going across. Um, obviously we've done this part before in terms of the moon dashing etc etc so we need to get out of here now so basically we're heading all the way to the right where we found the um three doors or the three the, the door with the three yellow keys so for now just keep going ignoring all the dump the dump bags obviously we don't need to go anywhere else because we've got all the collectibles we're, we're pretty much golden all we're doing is getting the second to last boss and like i said when i knew put, like <laughs> And it's going to be coming up soon. Just ignore these enemies. I didn't bother fighting them. I couldn't be asked. But you need to stick your Moonblade in. And then just waltz across. And then what you can do is get up your Moon Sword. And they just jump down. Woohoo! And you're out for the count, buddy boy. Well, maybe if you were younger, you could have survived the fall. Like me. So here it is then. This is where the boss fight is. We've got the two yellow keys. So up on the D-pad. Or up on the left stick. And that is going to crackle open the big snackle crackle door. So, like I said, this boss battle, when... Again, instead of going for the offensive, which 
is always my plan in stuff, in all fairness. But we're going to go to the left. Anyway, here. Uh, this is where the boss battle will begin in just a moment. Uh, but what you need to do, if you need some health, there is some health right there. It's always worth grabbing, just in case. But you're going to see exactly what I... <laughs> well, I definitely need some health now. But you're going to see exactly what I mean. So the first thing you're going to do, it is exactly like our moon sword. It's going to be stuck in the ground. And you are going to aim for that so that will fly to this guy, fly to the boss, and it will stun him. So, again, always be on the lookout. As soon as you see the dash move, just move. Don't go for the offensive. Dash up to the... Hit that, and that will give him a little stun. It didn't this time. I actually missed. So, again, what he's going to do is just throw some swords at you. And he is uh, going to dash you as well. If you can get a good hit on him... Then, ah, see now, if you're not quick enough, there you go. So I managed to just about do that, which will now give me the opportunity to go and smash him up. And he will start flying up, open the gate, and we can keep going. So that's exactly what you're going to do. But just keep trying to avoid his spike attacks. That is the best way to do this, boss. Just keep trying to avoid his attacks. Don't bother going in with the offensive. As you can see there, the little symbol come across screen. And if you can, obviously just try and, you know, absolutely just try and whack him. If, if you can... Um, if you can harpoon blade him, and then just give him a few whacks with his sword, then yes, that's even better. But just go straight for the sword if you can. As you can see, I was able to do that, and he just spun straight away. Uh, which was kind of... Yeah, kind of lucky. Kind of lucky, that one. So, go to the right, we're gonna head up. Now, you're gonna come up to a health fountain, but the trick is you can only use this once. So, if you need a lot of health, it's probably worth doing it now, but if not, what you can do is go up, and then you can actually lure him back down, use the health fountain for later on, and then um, you should be good. But you can only use it once in this battle, so be aware of that. Right, give him a whack. Again, just keep... Where it, if he's on the second floor, you stay on the first floor and vice versa. I, again, was able to luckily get a quick hit in, so he nipped up a little bit more. But that's what you want to be doing. Go to the opposite direction that he is and just keep going until the moon, his moon sword is sticking out of the ground. Or you can just whip straight up, give him the whack, or <laughs> I don't like you, muckbag. It's gonna be, it's gonna be appearing. There it is. So, like, I do get hit, but that's fine. And again, as long as if you can keep, if you buy him, you can keep just pressing the Y button as well, and that will give him a couple of lucky hits as well. Um, but again, you don't want to be going uh, flat out with the offensive here. And that's it. And that is literally it. Now, sometimes. You will have to fight him on top of here, and he has the ability to kick you off. So if you don't have the Icarus achievement yet, um, you can just jump off. You can come back here and then jump off the tower. Uh, but you should have got it by now anyway. But yeah, the, the I'm not sure if it was like an update in the game to make it easier or something. But I've I have seen a couple of people who've continuously kept on fighting at the very very top of the tower. But for some reason, for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> It went well. It went well for me. So I hope it goes well for you as well and you don't have to fight me at the top of the tower. But anyway, that is that particular battle done. And then eventually what's going to happen is we are going to have more cutscenes here. I'm going to end up back in Oak Tide.
Righty, righty, schmighty. So, there is literally not a lot left to do in Oak Tide. Uh, you can heal if you need to heal, you can heal up with some soup. Otherwise, we're going to go all the way to the left, interact with Grand Funk Diddy Master, the boatman himself. And this time, we're going to go to the Velvet Islands. So, not a lot left to do now before coming up to the finale of El Bossaroni. So, not a lot uh, left to do here. All we're going to do is keep going to the right. Um, basically, there's going to be cutscenes as we progress. We're going to have to harp and dash up and the right to continue eventually, and then continue right until we um, reach a temple door. So this is where we just need to dash up and to the right, or to the very right, apparently. Uh, but it, all, it is all just cutscenes at the minute. So, not a lot going on here. Right then, so this is a battle of sorts. There's a health fountain. We can't actually grab anything. I don't know if it's because I got full health. But what's going to happen here is... Um, in fact, the only thing you have to do for the next sort of couple of scenes and everything is... Um, just press the X button next to her. Although, damn, she gets a little... If you get too close, she'll give you a little jab to the throat and then a big massive punch to the face. Incredible, really. But um, there's no, it's not a real battle, there's no health bar, you can't lose any health or anything. So you just need to keep pressing the X button. Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ! Man, this lady is strong. She is strong woman. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's all you gotta do. Keep Just keep pressing the X button until you keep going right for a couple of screens until we get to a tree. And then an automatic cutscene will begin. And there's only so many times you can take a big bro punch like that to the absolute jaw bags. Damn. <laughs>
Now, what do you want after a long day and night of passionate... Oh, <laughs> oh, a, a passionate fighting? Well, how about a bit of passionate love there with Miss Lady Elijah? Yes, that is Lady Elijah who's herself, so she's not just some princess, as it were. She's not just some lady. She is badass, and I bet she's a... I bet she gives some good snoo-snoo as well, to be fair. Um, but anyway, passionate fighting equals passionate love equals passionate abandonment issues. Now we're all alone... Um, well, that, well, that sucks. So, <laughs> after, I mean, after all this fighting, we were bound to get lucky once, somewhere, right? Even if it was with our own, you know, Pam and her five friends, i.e. yourself. We, we just had to. We've done a lot of work, not to, not to be rewarded. Uh, although I suppose we've had money, we got some new hats, so actually, yeah, yeah. New hats is better than Snoo Snoo, that is, that is my interpretation of it now. So we now have the last blue key. Oh! And we've just got one final bass ball to do. Now, this is going to be the point of no return. So make sure that you do have nine out of the ten achievements. Make sure that you've got the vitality stealing hat. Of course, we should have got that earlier on. And of course, the acid hat, which we're going to have. Uh, make sure you've got the lime sour achievement, which you should have by now. El Dorado for opening 10 treasure chests, Lord Gardener for cutting 30 bushes, Oni Hasoto for blowing the horn three times next to the boatman, and the and the um, finding all the music boxes, plus all the castaways. As long as you've got 9 out of 10 achievements, then you are squared away and we can just crack on with it. Now, if you didn't actually manage to get Icarus earlier on, backtrack to Phillip Islands, make your way to the top of the tower again, and just jump off, as I said earlier, and then you should definitely get it then. Um, so, like I said, very, very important, do not select Shadow Gate, because the Shadow Gate is what we're going to have to choose with the Boatman, and that is the point of no return. So do not select Shadow Gate as the destination until you are absolutely 100% ready to go. Like I said, if you do, you're going to start the path towards the final boss, you're not going to be able to return, and you have to start a new game then to obtain whatever it is that you didn't grab. So, make sure you've got 9 out of 10 achievements, and if that's the case, then we're all good. So... We're going to select Shadow Gate as soon as we get over to the Lord Von Ardy. Uh, as soon as we get over to the boat. Are you ready? Are you ready to do this? It's the final boss. Are you ready for love? Yes, I am. Right, so remember the hat now. We need to make sure to choose the feather hat. Uh, rather than be hat free, we need, there it is. So the scorching acid Bernie boy. So that's it. Let's do this thing. Now the final boss, he looks very intimidating. looks very scary. It's basically a ship. But it's not too bad, just like the last boss that we got, uh, last uh, boss that we beat, sorry. If you have a certain way, if you're going to just go straight out with the offensive, it's just not going to work at all. Trying to just smash everything. You need to, obviously, you're going to need to do quite a bit of dodging, etc, etc. But if you have a good um, rhythm with it, then it's generally not too bad. So the, the gist of it is, it's going to be this big ship, and he's going to have four big chunky claws. Now when those claws get stuck in the ground as they try to attack you from above, that is when you can slice your, slice your way through them. Now to make things even easier, what you can do is put your moon sword down, stay there, and then as soon as the claws are about to go down, move to the right and then press the white button to dash back um, to dash back to the claw on the ground and then give it another couple of whacks. That will actually get rid of it quite easier as well. Um, but, well, let's just wait for the scene to end for a mo. Oh, 
Arinda was young behind her. di abrazo in un dono oh, rimane ainda mi brilla ma io venia So here we go then, final boss time. And you're gonna see exactly what I mean. Now, if you do it the way I do it, now they're only, the, the claws are only gonna come down to wherever you are, not where your moon sword is. So that's the one mistake that I was making here. So immediately put your moon sword down, then you can dash to him and then give him a whack. Watch out for the bombs. The bombs will be there and can hurt you quite badly. Just wait until the claw drops down and then give him a quick whack. He will shoot some electrical charges as well. So be aware of that one as well. He can also drop off some enemies, and as soon as the claws are done, go over to his head and give him a whack a good couple of times. That'll get a quarter of his health bar down already. Right, just wait, and then, like, sometimes if you've already put your moon sword down, you might actually accidentally miss it. Don't hit it three times. If there are two claws that are above each other, just hit it, the, uh, just hit it twice. Otherwise, you may get hit. And we just wait in. There he is. So just wait, and then give him a whack. And go straight to the uh, guy again. The guy, it's not really a guy, is it? We're gonna fall down. Now, on, now there are enemies here, but don't waste your time focusing on the enemies. You will hit them dead anyway. If, watch out for the guns as well. So wherever he's shooting, go in the opposite direction. Watch out for the electrical charges as well, as I said. And watch out especially for the big things coming from above. Now, all you can hear is about a split second where the they're going to start coming down. You can see him coming over his ship as well, not that you're focusing on the ship. Um, but you can hear it for a split second just coming down. So as soon as you hear that, you need to move. And there we go again. Now, either side of the screen, you're going to see some health pickups if you need them in the boxes as well. So there's the first one. I'll just grab one here. So again, don't worry about the big enemies or the small enemies. Just focus on the claws. Now, it's going to start getting a bit quicker. Obviously, don't get underneath them because that will hurt like a pig. Electrical charge. If now, if you're close enough and he starts to electrical charge, you can actually hit them as well, and that gives off a little. Uh, that that'll uh, give him an extra hit. So that is one claw done. It's kind of hard because there's a lot of stuff going on. But if you can put your moon sword down, bit of acid there, but you got your acid hat, so don't worry. Um, electrical charge again, so just be aware of that. So yeah, that is the main plan. That is how I was able to beat this boss quite easily there, was just putting the moon sword down and then just slamming straight to him. And that is how you beat the final boss. So now I, w I won't lie, I died three times. And that, like I said, is because I thought when you put the moon sword down, it was a decoy. And I thought you would, I thought the claw would go down onto the moon sword and you can go straight there, but it's not. They're just after you the entire time, which is harsh. We haven't even done anything. Um, but yeah, so that is how you beat the boss. So hopefully, um, the bit of direction that I just gave you there did help. You know, like I said, it may take two or three times, but hopefully with a little couple of hints and tips there, I hope that it did help you in order to smash the game out. Yay, we're done!
So the last thing we have to do in this game then is simply head to the right. Me and Lady Elijah are going to part ways now because I'm blue and she's red. We're blue dabba dee dabba die apparently. Um, but hey, at least me and Lady Elijah had a little kissy kiss action. So, well, you know, we win. Now we've got to go back onto a boat full of bearded ruggedy ass men. Oh, this could, <laughs> this could also be a good term. Um, but anyway, just head to the right anyway, <laughs> and give you a good time because they because they're gonna save my ass like I've just saved all their asses. And this is basically gonna be the end scene, and then the last achievement, farewell, is going to unlock. I mean, to be fair, that I mean that is just wood. You literally could have just got found a big axe or crafted a massive axe from somewhere and just knobbed your way through. But well. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to your beloved. Oh, look at us. I just went to grab your hand and you you just walked away. <gasps> well, give me it. Oh, maybe ah, maybe um, far far away was sad because uh, she just abandoned us after our night of passionless fighting, passionate fighting, as it were. But eventually, achievement's going to unlock right after this scene. Now, when that is done, that is Elijah. So I'll just leave it here then, guys and gals. So. Oh, we're swimming, are we? Okay. So, anyway, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game. I really hope you enjoyed the game. I thought it was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed the guide as well and that it helped. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon as well. Kings and queens, among other kings and queens, you lot are. So, thank you so much again. And there it is. Take a look at your 10 out of 10. Na -na. Beautiful, beautiful. So there we go again. I do hope the guide helped. Thank you so much for watching again. And I shall see you in the next Game Pass game, guys and gals. Big love.